at all. Alrighty, guys, it is time. Let's get this started. Continue. And we are on this one right here. And you're looking for remote work. And I miss the beginning of COVID when I got to work from home 100% of the time. That was actually a lot of fun. Now I get to work from home one day a week, better than nothing. But with gas prices the way they are, I wish I could work from home more often. Okay, so I think we did everything in this chapter. Everybody already went to bed. We're just gonna talk. And then I think we tell the creepy doll we are going to bed. So are you retiring to bed? Yes, I don't think we have anything else to do. Let's see. And which day is it Wednesday? You mean in real life or in the game? <laughs> okay, rest. Good night. All right. Yep, chapter two, Shimio complete. I like those little scenes. That's cool. Oh, that's a cool twist, Bambi. I like that. That works. It's been three days since Shimio's defeat. Mashita and Shaw have left, leaving only Christy and I at the mansion. Oh, I forgot that Shaw's mark was gone too. That's right. So yeah, half of our group is gone. We just have me and Christy and the doll. We've not had any new mark bearers arrive, nor any new info on any spirits. So um, Ellaby, the number at the bottom left, that's actually how many times we've died so far in this game. So every time I die, I have to add to the counter. Death's footsteps keep drawing closer. Oh, oh, I see, fantastic. Yeah, it's Wednesday that I work from home. Um, for a while it was, I was working from home on Thursdays and Fridays, but one of our, uh, one of our guys' schedules shifted around, so I had to change, unfortunately. Okay, so, good work, Lady Christy and Lord Cadia. Did you obtain any clues? <laughs> we got nothing. No, nothing really. Yeah, unfortunately, it wasn't my choice to pick, or I would have picked Thursday as well, because sometimes Thursday is my Friday, and that would have been perfect. But, nah, I just had to... We have to make it so there's a certain number of people always in the office, so for me, Wednesday worked out best. I'd hoped, but... I see... Lady Saya's studies seemed optimal to contain something of interest. Christy and I just finished investigating Saya Kujo's study. It had been full of mountains of specialized books and piles of reports. It was a daunting task, but we did our best to search through them regardless. Except it was all futile. <laughs> it's, I mean, Phantasma, the other option is I don't get to work from home at all. And I would definitely choose this instead of that. So I'm just happy to be able to do it at all. A lot of people don't get to work from home at all anymore. We're trying to keep it as long as possible. Even though as far as COVID is concerned, we have no real reason to. We don't even wear masks at work anymore. Or you don't have to. If we, if we have meetings and stuff, I still do. But like, there's no requirement in our buildings anymore. <laughs> okay, now the CIA lets him hack when he pleases. That's right, from home even. Okay, so everything was about healing the spirit. Nothing mentioned the mark at all. Which, healing the spirit is very important as well. And FaZe Clan, um, just go ahead and type exclamation point Discord in the chat and that'll give you the link. And how you doing, FaZe? Welcome back. Hey, Mr. Kadia, don't you think it's useless to keep searching the mansion? Do you have any other ideas then? Well... Remember what I said about H Shrine? Since that was the last stream, I'm going to go ahead and say I forgot. But there was, I think, something about the cults and they were trying to protect something at H Shrine. We never actually got to go in there because there were so many bees blocking us. Let's say I forgot. Oh yeah, you are absolutely welcome to, FaZe. Yeah, just type exclamation point Discord in the chat and that'll give the link. <laughs> That's a hell of a song title, Bambi. It's okay to punch Nachis by Cheap Perfume. <laughs> so what? You lost that memory. It's in the forest by H Castle. I was thinking, maybe the shrine is connected to all the spirit stuff. But that's like the place we've already been back to. I didn't know we we're going to be going to the same area a second time. 
That's what Shimeo's note said, right? Everything's happening in the forest is the divine wrath of H Shrine. Then you think the mark and the spirit activity are because of this divine wrath? It's definitely a possibility. Disasters happen in many ghost stories and myths because of the wrath of gods. Isn't there some value into looking into it? <laughs> uh, let's just say maybe. We don't have any other ideas. Why not check it out, right? I'll have to listen to that song, Bambi. <laughs> exactly what I expect from you. Always so quick on the uptake. Christy is brimming with confidence. Before, she didn't even want to help us. She seems in a much better mood than she was three days ago. She's a famous reporter, after all, so maybe this is what she's really like. So, Mary. I'd like to go and see H-Shrine. Don't you mind? Or, you don't mind, do you? So she's going to come with? Good. Although she said earlier she wouldn't help us if things got scary. Hmm. It is true many unpleasant rumors surround the forest. If the cause is H-Shine, there may be some clues there. But even if there are, if it's spiritual, then how are normal humans like us supposed to find it? Nice. Welcome to the Discord phase. <laughs> Christy and I don't have any spiritual powers. Hmm. In that case... Could you bring me along with you to H Shrine? That's what I was saying last stream. We should bring this doll with us for help. <laughs> Why not? Will you look weird? Sure. But we're also hunting ghosts. Oh, is that an uh, uh, alternate account phase? How come you have two accounts? <laughs> and Sheila, you got your Google Pixel 6 on Sunday. Your dad paid the down payment and you're paying the monthly fees and you ended up uh, paying your dad $100 back since he was looking at the plan with his credit. So the down payment was around 200 bucks, but you have credit, so it ended up being 500. Nice, Sheely, very cool. So I was just saying, if you just got that, did it come with headbuds at all, earbuds? That might be better than those like over the ear ones that you were talking about. So she says, I should be able to sense the presence of anything spiritual. I can act as a guide as well. You know that shrine? Yes, in truth, it enshrines the guardian deity of the Kujo family. So it's related to this mansion, huh? Over the generations, the heads have taken care of the shrine. However, that came to an end after the recent war resolved. As one who serves the Kujos, I am concerned about the present state. Who are you serving? They're all dead, aren't they? Then bringing you along would mean I have to carry you, don't I? <laughs> How big is she? <laughs> As it is impossible for me to walk, I would agree with that assessment. I am sorry to inconvenience you. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, Sheila, you meant to say you have no credit. That makes that statement very different. <laughs> so the down payment was way more expensive. And also the phone doesn't even have a headphone jack. Oh, it's only like Bluetooth, Sheely. Oh, that's right. I've always had Samsung phones. And I think even my most recent one has a headphone jack. Does it? Yes. Yeah, my current phone does have a headphone jack. That goes into focus there. So, I don't know if the newest ones do. This is a Galaxy 10, I guess. <laughs> Sorry, Phantasma. We don't talk about credit here. I didn't bring it up. And phase, this is a backup one because you might get banned from someone's chat. That's why. Oh, I see. Well, if you're banned, you probably don't want to go back there because there's some disagreements of you hanging out there. But you get banned here, phase. <laughs> but thank you for hanging out with both accounts. Okay. So an overgrown forest in the dead of night. I'm not looking forward to having to carry Mary all the way to the shrine. You need like one of those baby backpack things. You look worn out, and we haven't left. It's a small price to pay if we can get any hints about the spirits. That's true. I think Mary's eager about this too, so I'll just deal with it, I suppose. Okay, let's get back to the forest. All right, here we go. So do I have to choose her as a partner? We're already partnered with her, perfect. And Ellaby, you just want to waste time so you can sleep through the whole 16 hour drive. <laughs> there you go, try to stay up. I know, I hate long drives, especially if I'm not driving. Then unless I have like a game or something to play, it's really boring. Although sometimes reading a book or playing a game can make me carsick. 
and uh, Platypus. Your Galaxy Z Flip 3 doesn't have a headphone jack, unfortunately. Oh no, other galaxies don't have it, huh? That's a bummer. Although, honestly, I haven't used those kind of headphones in a while. I have a few sets of earbuds I use for different devices. And now you're imagining Mary in a Baby Bjorn and giggling. Baby Bjorn? Is that the, the, the artist Bjorn, the musician? And Sheely, the Galaxy S21 doesn't have a headphone jack either. No! I think I have like the last one before they got rid of them, huh? Okay, so let's uh, exit, I think. Yes, and we're going back to the forest. <laughs> I'm just saying the spirits ain't do anything in this game. Free the mirror, ghost kid. I don't know. I thought that ghost kid ended up like... Did they, that ghost kid kill one of our partners or almost killed them. It was pretty dangerous. Okay, before we leave, we put Mary in the back seat. Thank God she's not as heavy as she looks. I guess it depends on what kind of wood she's made of, huh? Spider monkey! <laughs> oh my goodness. Wrong screen, John. Spider monkey 83. 29 months subscribed to the channel. How is it going, Spider? There's your tokens. How you doing, dude? What is new? What you been up to? And also, I think you're currently playing... Thank you so much for the sub again, buddy. You're currently playing Uncharted, right? How is that going? Are you having fun? Are you getting stuck? Or are you making some good progress? I think that was the last game I saw you streaming. So those are such good games. I loved them. Do you love it? Nice. I think you were... You had never played the fourth one, right? Which one are you on right now? I think you're playing through the whole series. Okay, it's a harness that straps the baby to your belly. Yeah, I was thinking something kind of like that. Yeah. Bjork. That's what I was thinking of, Sheely. A, like baby Bjork. I didn't understand where that was coming from. Bjorn. I never heard of a Bjorn before. So yeah, Bjork. That's what I was thinking of. It's close. It shares most of the same letters, right? <laughs> oh, that's funny. And you're Uncharted 2, Chapter 18-ish. You're probably like over halfway through the game. Nice, Spider. Making good progress. Okay, so we should be able to carry this creepy doll just fine. By the way, Mr. Cadia, have you read the files over there? <laughs> Love that. Ultra zoom in, right? Uh, she points to the right side of the room and shelves packed with files. What are those? Those look like little beer kegs. And then below looks like tires. What do they even have in here? Otherwise, I am doing fantastic, Spider. Things are good. When I'm not streaming, I'm getting my butt kicked in Elden Ring. <laughs> but that's pretty much it. Not too much exciting going on. And Taja, you're thinking it's a timing issue with Amazon? You unlinked your sister's ex from hers and started using it yourself? And you think he might have just used it to sub more recently? Oh, that's right, because you were trying to do the sub and it wasn't letting you. Um, that might be it. That might be it. <laughs> well, fingers crossed. It does come back very soon, Tajay. Um, there we go. So not yet. I've searched most of the mansion, but I haven't checked the garage. How long have we been here? Have you not looked through everything? Oh, really? Christy grabs a file and flips through the pages. That's right. You had the same problem. Is it a John Cadia problem? Am I causing it? Or is it a Twitch problem? <laughs> I don't know. I wouldn't blame. I wouldn't be surprised if I did something. Looks like articles on various crimes. The clippings cover every incident in H City and the surrounding area. Was Miss Cujo looking for criminal activity? Any of it look related to the mark? No, not as far as I can tell. I guess you might want to look at newspapers and stuff for disasters, or some yeah, like a violent crime. That might be where there's like a ghost haunting. That kind of makes sense. These are all extremely old. The most recent one is dated five years ago. She puts the file back. All right, we should head out soon. Let's get out of here. Yeah, Taji, I was thinking yours would be fixed that same stream, but if it's not still fixed today, it could be a different issue altogether. I park outside the entrance of the forest and gather Mary into my arms. And the ultra zoom is even worse for you because the mobile Twitch has trouble understanding how big your phone screen is. And the full screen view is fine, but you have to view chat. It's very zoomed in. Oh, that's a bummer where it has like chat on the side. If you're viewing it horizontally, 
I've always noticed it just kind of cuts off half the screen. I don't think it's like zoomed in for me when I did that. Otherwise, the aspect ratio would be all kind of wonky. Here we are back at the creepy forest. We make our way to the familiar arch. There's still a long way to go. A middle-aged man is carrying a doll. You're practically a ghost story yourself if someone sees you here. What does that mean? Okay, when you look at it that close, it's even creepier. I am very sorry to cause you such trouble. Maybe you shouldn't talk in public all the time, make sure there's nobody around. Mary stares up at me as I hold her. Her skin and hair glint bewitchingly when the light from the flashlight catches them. I have not been outside in a long time. And to go hiking in the arms of such a fine gentleman. Is she hitting on me? Is this doll coming on to us? This is a very precious experience. I don't know if I like where this game is going. She sounds as dispassionate as ever, but... Is she actually having fun? Still, it is just as the rumors say. This forest is filled with the curses and resentment of the dead. Because people commit suicide here all the time. Simply their presence is enough to drive the living mad. The land is tainted. I can see why it has given birth to monstrous spirits. I bet if you track down the cause of it, it'll be the divine wrath. Let's hurry to the shrine. Hopefully, I guess all the bees will be gone, right? So we should be able to pass through now. And Platypus, you never use chat while your phone's horizontal, though? Apparently it just fixed itself now. Hey! It doesn't matter how it fixed itself. It's if it's fixed, don't break it again. <laughs> and you think it's because it's tagged in use by Twitch, even though you unlinked it from her Amazon? It just doesn't end the sub, so we'll have to wait for the last Prime to expire. Unfortunately, there's no way to know when he last used it. Could be that he had used it the day before you unlinked him. Oh, that would make sense. Just have to keep trying, Taja. You have to keep trying. Although sometimes you can actually, if you go to like sub to somebody new, like don't actually sub, but just click the button and it'll tell you down below when your Prime sub becomes available again. If you're on desktop anyway, I'm not sure if that same menu shows up on mobile, but that might give you a hint as to what the status is. Okay, we stand and watch for a while, but nothing comes out from the beehives. Oh, and it still didn't say anything. It's almost like it hasn't been used, but it can't, won't let you use it. And Bambi, there will also be some of your favorite Voltaire songs on her playlist, because she likes to feel spooky. Oh, that's going to be such a good playlist, Bambi. They seem to be sleeping. I'll take that. It is most likely because Shimiyo is now gone. Each shrine is up those stone steps. At Mary's discretion, we walk toward the gate. <laughs> sound, those footsteps sound like cartoon characters running or something. A small black shadow flits across our feet. Oh, the rabbit again. It's that rabbit again. Hmm. So this is the rabbit you told me about, Lord Cadia. You are correct. It is very cute. It's kind of cute, but those bright red eyes are kind of demonic. I don't know if I trust it. Actually, I know I don't trust it. The rabbit stares up at the two of us. So that's what's making those cartoon running sounds. Then disappears towards the shrine. It does seem to kind of lead us in the right path, though, maybe. What in the world was that about? What do you think, Mary? I felt a strange presence. It appears to be possessed by some kind of soul. So it's a spirit too. Indeed, though it does not appear strong enough to give marks to humans. We know nothing of its true nature, so please proceed with caution. So not a human spirit, but a rabbit spirit that's still haunting the world. <laughs> the bees committed the war crimes. I think the ghost caused the bees to commit the war crimes, Kano. And Bambi, her sire, the vampire who blooded her, was Doc Holliday, uh, one of those who fought at the shootout at the OK Corral. <laughs> You're turning Doc Holliday into a vampire? I like this fanfic. This is pretty cool. You do not have to drop that, Taja. It's going to fix itself. It might just take a month. It's no big deal. 
Okay, we follow the rabbit under the Tory gate and up the stone steps. This makes me wish I could go back to Japan. I don't know if they're even allowing people to go back there yet. At the top, we find the wilderness creeping in. There doesn't seem to be anything here but an old altar. Is this H Shrine? Oh, Gumbers, thank you so much for the lurk, buddy. Sadly, it has fallen into disrepair. The war was over 50 years ago. I suppose this was to be expected. That black rabbit is gone. Deserted shrines give me the creeps. Let's hurry up and get to searching, so we don't stay here long. Good call, but before we do that, I would like to save it. There we go. Bam. <laughs> and platypus coming back as a rabbit would be cool, though. With human knowledge, you could avoid cars and hawks, most likely. That's true. That would be really neat to, like, keep your memories. But as an animal, oh, you could do some mayhem. <laughs> Are you right, Tajay? Too many tokens missed. Oh, Bambi, when you're talking about uh, Doc Holiday, I, I read that. I, I mentioned that. That's pretty sweet. Okay, let's check out the shrine. There's a sacred... I'm going to destroy this. Shimanawa rope on a ragged boulder. I wonder if that boulder is an I I Iwakura. What's that? <laughs> I wonder the same thing. According to the ancient Shinto tradition, it's a sacred rock that the god descended on. It's not uncommon for the rock itself to become an object of devotion. Here's a beheaded statue over here. And she was a lady of the night in Tombstone. Now, when he's saying Tombstone, you're talking about like an Old West town or like specifically the movie Tombstone. Although it might have also been about a town, I'm guessing. It's been a long time since I watched that movie. Headless Buddha statues are buried in the ground. Maybe. I wonder what happened here. The war, <laughs> I guess. 50 years ago, right? It's a wooden shrine altar. A clouded old mirror serves as they go Shintai. It looks like it's true that no one's taken care of this place for a long time. I peek inside the altar, just in case, but all I find is a thick layer of dust. The go Shintai's outside and the altar's empty. That's concerning. Well, if it's in disrepair, isn't that, like, not surprising? Nice, Tajay. Enjoy Mass Effect. Such a great game. Have fun, dude. And thank you for the lurk. I don't think there's any more we can search. The Buddha statues concern me. Why are all the ones within the shrine missing their heads? Somebody does not believe in Buddhism, huh? Shinto and Buddhism were ordered to be separate during the Meiji period. Before then, many shrines were dedicated to both. Each shrine was much the same. But in the Meiji period, or Meiji, I don't know, there was a push to make Shinto the main religion. The faiths were forced apart. Extremists stole the Buddhist statues from the shrines and desecrated them. Oh, the famous anti-Buddhist movement. So this is where that happened. No, it was done in a public space as they wanted to make a show of it. The broken statues were carried here to serve as a memorial for worship. The Kujo family was to be said was said to be aggrieved, so he moved them in secret. It seems that all the broken statues from H City were buried here. What does H stand for again? We got like H Shrine, H City. I forget what H actually means. And Ellaby, is it okay if we make random small talk? And will the stream be an extra long stream? Random small talk, as you can see already happening, LB, is always welcome. Feel free to chat about whatever you like. And um, extra long stream, unfortunately, no, I do have work in the morning. Even though I work from home, I still have to be up before 6.30. <laughs> Better than 5.30, though. Usually I'm up at 5.30 when I have to drive into work. And platypus. Meiji is actually pronounced Meiji. Thank you, platypus. I know, it's one of those things. I don't use the words often enough, so I'm sure I butcher every single one. <laughs> Exactly. See? Bambi. Case in point. 
Strange. You said they were warshipped, but this place is pretty much a ruin. You have a keen eye, Lord Cadia. The shrine was subsequently dug up and the statues were stolen. Or at least the heads were stolen. So they came all the way into this huge forest just to carry off broken statues? Who would do something like that? That I do not know. I merely heard they were stolen 50 years ago, around the time of the war. So they're probably long dead by now, potentially. So the statues were broken, thrown away, and then dug up? They say the Buddha has a wealth of patience, but even he'd get angry. Could that anger have turned to divine wrath and given birth to the mark in the spirits? Mary? Have you been able to feel the presence of any spirits or whatever? I like that, or whatever. About that. This land is much more foreboding than I had imagined. The enmity of the forest swallows all else. It is hard to sense beneath it. So, too much background noise, right? <laughs> Yes, although I do sense the same presence as Lady Christie's mark, however faint, so we might be able to help her out. We're still screwed. I am sure the spirit that gave her mark is somewhere in the forest. So after all that, we were only able to reconfirm something we already knew. Forgive me, I was unable to. You don't have to apologize, Mary. We learned plenty of value here. We've pretty much explored the entire forest. What do you mean? I'll tell you on the way back. First, let's get the hell out of here. This place gives me the creeps. Maybe it's the ill will Mary sense. What do you mean? This is where we need to be to solve this thing. Why would you leave now? I don't get it. We're just going to have to come back here, right? Maybe we just have to drop her off. And she's like, you're on a roll with the anime movies? So you're finally watching your name. I've actually seen that one, Sheely. <laughs> I really liked it. It was pretty sad, but I thought it was actually really good. I liked your name. We actually ended up buying the Blu-ray. We haven't watched it again since, but we do own it, so we'll definitely watch it at some point. Nice. That was a good one. All right, so I think we're going backwards now, back to the entrance. We leave H Shrine, walking down the Beast Trail towards the forest entrance. Maybe it's because of that strange tale, but for some reason, I feel like someone is watching us from the darkness of the trees. Yeah, you're probably right. <laughs> dun, dun, dun! <laughs> we began, began driving back to the mansion. As we break out of the dense forest, I can see building lights pop up here and there. Well, that was a complete waste of time. My anxiety lifted. I don't even bother to filter the words that slip out of my mouth. Uh-oh, are we going to start swearing or something? Oh, I don't think that's true. It's all coming together for me. It just means we're going to be a little bit more rude. A little bit more testy. Without further prodding, Christy starts in on her theory. Passion evident in her voice. I believe Shimio was right. Each shrine is definitely what's causing all the strange stuff in the forest. I'm sure it's those stolen statues. Don't you agree? I wonder. It feels like we just don't have enough info at this point to say one way or the other. I meant to ask you guys, is everybody else going through daylight savings time right now? Did you have to roll your clocks forward? So now it feels like you're going to bed early and you're waking up early? Because <laughs> yeah, it's still messing with me a little bit. Not as bad as Andy. I think Andy got a little bit worse. And you would totally recommend A Silent Voice. It's on Netflix. And it's probably your favorite sh movie right now. I'll have to check that out. I do like watching anime movies. Usually preferably to anime shows. Not that I dislike all anime shows. But I feel like a lot of them have a ton of filler. I don't know if they have to meet some episode quota or what. But it seems like there's always a lot of filler in the shows. But the movies are usually much more condensed. Um, well put together. And usually just like higher quality, it seems. Let's see, there is no denying that a lot of strange things are going on in the forest. Between all the suicides and Shimio wandering around. It couldn't just be coincidence, could it? If we research the shrine, we might learn more about the mark. I feel that's a lot safer than risking our lives looking out for the spirit. 
Don't you think? You might be right. My replies are half-hearted, which isn't what Christy was hoping for, so she falls silent. She can read the room. <laughs> An awkward, uncomfortable silence settles. Lord Cadia, please stop the car. Uh-oh, this is the doll talking right now. And Sheely, anime has to fill time as to not overtake the manga or manga, since an episode of an anime can cover several chapters. Oh, that makes sense. Okay. I had no idea what the reason was. I thought maybe to like get a season approved or something, they had to reach so many episodes. But if they're trying to follow along with the written manga, then yeah, that makes a lot more sense. And another is a horror anime that doesn't have very much filler, and it's one of your favorites. Is it called Another Platypus? I've never heard of that one. I watched a few horror animes a long time. I don't know if they're horror. One of them might be. Like um, Ninja Scroll. Have you guys seen that one? It's like an 80s anime. It's really gruesome. It's really cool. And another one that's like... It's not porn. It's like pretty hard R, though. It's called... Um, what is it called? Uh, Devil City? Demon City. I think it's called Demon City. <laughs> it's like an old 80s anime my friend showed me way back when I was first discovering anime. That one was pretty interesting. Okay, so the doll says, please stop the car. Mary speaks for the first time since we entered the car. What is it? I sense a presence similar to Matey Christy Marks close by. Ooh, might have found Christy's spirit. Where are we going? So it's not at the shrine. Hmm. Interesting. Following Mary's request, I park in a vacant rest stop on the outskirts of H City. Christy and I step out of the car. Oh crap. Ugh. Uh oh. Whenever our mark goes crazy, we're close to a spirit. My mark is suddenly scalding. Is something nearby? Look, someone's over there. At a phone booth? <laughs> you don't see those two often anymore, do you? I don't remember the last time I saw a phone booth. A small girl steps out of the telephone box. Why is a kid outside at this time of night? Thank you for bringing me out here this late at night, Ida. I got to talk with Hanayomi. Oh yeah? Glad to hear it. <laughs> this guy. Speaking of anime, look at his shirt. That's great. A rather round young man appears, stepping out of the shadows. Is he sweating, or are those like two different moles on each side of his cheek? It's hard to tell. And uh, is these seasonal animes aren't as bad with filler as weekly animes. With seasonal, the whole season is animated and released episode. Weekly animes have each episode animated and released on a week-by-week -week basis. That makes sense that a weekly anime would have to have more filler. It's probably not the best idea to get a quality product, honestly. <laughs> and the whole season is animated and released episode by episode. Oh my god. Fills up so quick. Holy cow! Let me let them get through whatever advertisements they have to. We don't do ads on the channel, so everybody usually has to suffer through a pre-roll. You never know how long it's going to be. But it's good to try to wait to say hello until you start seeing people. Elegant Frost, welcome Raiders to John Cadia. We got Crazy Ninja One. How are you doing? How was your stream, Elegant? I hope you had a wonderful time. What were you playing? Let me give you a shout out there. You were working on. That is the wrong name. There we go. We had a different name that started with ELA that I was trying to pick up on. You were playing some Far Changing Tides. I've never even heard of that game. You're always playing some really cool indie games. What is Far Changing Tides? Very curious what that is, but welcome. Thank you so much for the raid. I hope you had a good time. Did you like the game? Were you just testing it out? Or are you uh, trying to complete this one? That's really cool. We are currently playing um, this game called Deathmark, a visual novel horror game where we have to like basically like the ring or the grudge, we're trying to get rid of a ghost curse as quickly as possible before it kills us. Oh, wait, I might have heard of that one now, Elegant. Is that like a like a ship based? I don't know if it's a pirate game, but it's like you're sailing on a ship. I, I think it's kind of based around a ship or something. It looked kind of neat. 
So basically you are a little guy in a giant machine vehicle and you press buttons in it to fuel the engine and grab a hose to put out fires. And in this one you are in a boat. Okay, I, yeah, I thought I saw a boat. I thought I think I saw it pop up on new and trending in Steam. That's pretty cool. How are you liking it so far? Did you play the original? I never played the original. But yeah, I hope you're liking it. That's really cool. Okay, so we just met this new guy, which I don't know why it's not showing him. Let me try to click this again. There he is. So he says, you got your question answered, Zuzu? Yeah, it's okay now. Honey Yomi sure is amazing, though. She knows where everything is. You got that right. She helped me find my limited edition Love and Hero phone strap I dropped. <laughs> uh, what's Love and Hero? What? You don't know. They're a popular idol group here. They've been all over TV lately. I'm surprised you haven't heard. I would be like this guy. Or no, I'd be like the little girl. I don't know anything about idols. And you did play the original in 2019, and you're liking it, though it has some control problems like accidentally climbing ladders all the time. Definitely slow atmospheric game, so not for everyone. That's pretty cool though. That's awesome. I'm glad to hear you're liking it. There's this one game that's very, very slow, very, very atmospheric. I was thinking about streaming because I don't know when I would play it Otherwise, it's a point-and-click adventure game. Um, Kentucky Route Zero, have, have any of you guys heard of that one? I don't know how good that would be to stream. It looks very artsy, very interesting. Um, but it just has a cool, creepy atmosphere. I don't know, I think I'd like to try it, but it's, it's very slow. <laughs> like, if I played that game late at night, it would probably put me to sleep. Okay, TV's restricted at home. Mom says it rots your brain. Oh, Ida? Is the bus coming soon? So is this guy named Ida? Or Ida? I'm not sure how to say that. Oh, the last bus is on the way. We better go. We'll be in big trouble if your mom finds out we went out. Yeah. Dun dun dun. And Crazy Ninja, you would be curious to see it? If you fall asleep while playing, does that mean a sleep stream soon? <laughs> it's almost happened before, Crazy Ninja. If you go and look at the clips of the stream, there's a few where I started to pass out when I was trying to play um, Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney. I was streaming way past my bedtime, and uh, yeah, I just started to doze off. I never like fully went to sleep. It was more like my head was nodding, and I started to talk nonsense because I'm trying to read everything like I am right now, and then I just kind of woke myself up and kept on going. <laughs> but I got close to actually passing out. I think they did release the last chapter. Yeah, they even came out with like a special version, I think for consoles, it had like a different name. Okay, we watched from a distance for a while, but it's hard to determine their relationship. The pain from my scar is suddenly gone. That's good. Hey, Christy, what do you think? I turn, but Christy isn't there. Oh, that's creepy. Hey, you there. How do you know that girl? Oh, is that Christy asking? Depending on your answer, I'll report you for child abduction. Yep. Well, there goes Christy, hounding the poor guy. He seemed like he wanted to get the kid back to his, her mom, so like, seems like a good relationship? I don't know. Just calm down. I try to placate her, but she won't budge. Um, I... The man stumbles over his words. He looks flustered and overwhelmed. Hey, lady. Don't be mean to Ida. The girl rushes to stand defensively in front of him and glares at us. Oh, that's cute. She seems a lot more level-headed than the flustered guy behind her. I asked him to help me, okay? I wanted to talk to Hanayomi, so I had him come with me. Who's this Hanayomi you keep mentioning? A ghost who helps find things. People say that you can talk to her from this telephone box. I think we came to the right place. A ghost, huh? She looks at me. We're both thinking the same thing. Earlier, the mark was hurting, so maybe... You guys look serious. Uh, what's going on? He nervously glances between us. Does this scar look familiar at all? I showed them the mark on my right arm. Hey, hold on. What is this? That looks exactly like mine. 
So he's our newest teammate, huh? <laughs> he pulls off one of his gloves and reveals the mark on his hand. It's the cursed scar, yeah? I have an article on it in OOP Arts Monthly. They say it causes amnesia, even kills you, but that's nonsense. It's not true at all, right? Right? Sounds like he heard the rumors, but chose not to do anything about it. That's no surprise, really. It's tough to believe it's real until your memory loss starts becoming noticeable. I got memory loss all the time. Am I cursed? <laughs> I've got one of those, too. It showed up on my left wrist when we made that phone call earlier. So even just coming here will curse you. Terrible idea. But if we take care of this ghost, it should save them. Maybe even Christy. Pulling up her sleeve, she shows us her mark. They both have the same mark after and after calling Hanayome, that's more than a coincidence. Well, we can't just leave them here. Let's bring them to the mansion. We tell them what's going on and ask them to go to Kujo Mansion with us. I feel like we just keep going back to the mansion and then going right back out. Let's just keep on adventuring. Don't go back to the safe spot. It surprisingly doesn't take much to get them to come. I thought it would take more convincing. Could potentially, or could partially be because they missed the last bus while talking to us. That's true. Michael, you made it. How's it going, Michael? Welcome, buddy. How was your weekend, dude? Before they climb in, I warn Mary to stay quiet until we get back. Might be a bad idea to freak them out. I like how the car at least has a different scene. It's not the normal static scene with the car in front of us. Depending on where you're driving, it actually looks different. It'd be nice if it was moving, I suppose. Oh, no problem at all, Michael. You just got off work, right? So we just went to bed because we stopped the last stream right before the end of the chapter. When we woke up, our detective buddy, what was his name, Mashita, is gone. As well as that like kind of punk kid guy that uh, was real ornery all the time, he took off as well because their marks were gone. So it's just us and Christy, and now we're trying to find the ghost that cursed Christy. In driving around, we went into a phone booth that's apparently haunted, and these two characters that were trying to use it to make some kind of special call got the curse. They have the same mark. So now we're taking them back to our mansion and try to find out some more information about that spirit. So first, we introduce ourselves. The man's name is Ita Nakamato. The girl is Suzu M Morimiya. They tell us they met through the reader's column in the OOP Arts Monthly. Suzu mentioned she was interested in Hanayome, and Ida told her what he knew. Then she pestered him into bringing her to the rumored telephone box. They were out this late because of her. Her parents sound pretty strict. Now she's going to be grounded forever. <laughs> her mother keeps a close eye close eye on her after school and she needs permission to go out so she snuck out of the house after her mother went to bed that's great you should absolutely sneak out with a strange adult man when you're an underage girl right no that's a terrible idea your parents are never going to let you out of the house again yeah just basically taking them back to our haunted house although there was like some weird spirit activity initially frost at our house but once we found the corpses covered in like plants and stuff it hasn't been a problem again since we actually had to go somewhere else to resolve that so honey yomi is just as famous at my school as hanahiko is that was the first ghost we took care of hey ita please tell them about those rumors do i have to okay fine Ita reluctantly tells us at Suzo's request. <laughs> They're like, you don't have to read all this. We'll just skip ahead. They're just rumors I read, but... Oh no, we're actually getting the story. Okay. Chapter 3. That's creepy. So it looks like a bride, but look how big the head is. It was like really tall. Could it be a cone head? <laughs> <laughs> guys remember that movie or that I think it was a skit on SNL too way back when hey remember that one story you know the one about the public phone box in H-City 
good old Coneheads. Who was that? Dan Aykroyd? I think it was one of the Coneheads. And um, I can't remember any of the other actors, honestly, that played Coneheads. I'm, Dan Aykroyd's the one that stands out. I have no idea who's talking right now, so I don't know which voice to use. There's a ghost that... Maybe it's that new guy. There's a ghost that looks like a bride, and she'll find what you're looking... Or she'll find what you're looking for. One of my friends actually tried it. He went to the specific phone box that lets you talk with ghosts. The phone suddenly started ringing. Jane Curtin? Oh, was that the wife? Jimmy? I don't even recognize that name. He slowly picked up the phone. But all I could hear was this weird smacking noise. Some people pay good money for that, getting some chewing ASMR. He stayed on the line until... I like doing this. Did you see it? He heard a woman whisper. So he did what the rumor said to do and... No, I haven't seen it. Oh, I vaguely remember you're supposed to answer that way, yeah. Then she said... What? Do you want to see it? His cat had gone missing, so he asked where it was. When he looked where the woman said it was, it really was there. That's cool. So the rumors are totally true. I want to go ask her where my future bride is now. Oh, want to come with me? See, those kind of things, I feel like when you ask those questions or you get like a, you know, hint or something, it's going to be like a genie where... Maybe they'll help you out, but there's going to be a backside to that support as well that's way worse than whatever help you got. There. Bam! Get on the chair. I carry Mary from the car and gently place her back on the sofa. No, that didn't look too gentle. Mmm. Good call, Jumi. Okay, now I remember her more from Third Rock from the Sun. That was such a fun show back in the day. Didn't they come out with another one? Or they were working on a spin-off to Third Rock? I forget. It did not need another show. <laughs> it was good for what it was. Thank you very much. Being in your arms is not bad, but I am most calm when I am here. The doll really talked. I can't say I expected that. Then, does this mean all that stuff about Mark, the Mark is true? On the way over, we updated Suzu and Ita with just about all they needed to know. They may not completely believe us, but they're not rejecting it outright either. It seems that Ita, in particular, has already experienced some memory loss. Something about forgetting the names of anime characters or voice for actors. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That's that's the most important thing that this guy is losing is the ability to remember anime characters and voice actors. That's that's when he knows there's a problem. I love that. Uh, Christy looked at him strange, but he appears to be taking it quite seriously. And Suzu snucked out of her house because she believed the rumors about Amayome. They both believed in the occult already. I'm pretty sure they'll help us find a way to escape the mark. I hope so. <laughs> That's the answer you start when you talk about any topic with people. So let's talk about anime characters and voice actors. <laughs> you know, there's very few voice actors I could actually name off the top of my head. Maybe like five or six. There's like, what? Uh, Nolan North, who does everything. Um, Mark Hamill does a ton of voiceovers. Um, trying to think of some of those Simpsons guys. Um... Uh oh, I hit the wrong button. It's like auto going through everything. I missed a couple. There's a way to look at the old ones, though, which I really like. Okay, so what we missed was I said they both believe in the occult already. I'm pretty sure they'll help us find the mark. Granted, they're also really curious about Hanayome. Oh, and then she says, Pardon me, may I speak? The mark's on Suzu and Ita. They are very likely from Hanayome and Lady Christie. 
I get feeling, or I feeling, the feeling I sense from your mark is the same as theirs. <gasps> Does that mean we can take care of this one and save ourselves finally? I can't remember the names of games or anything on the spot. Oh, it's terrible, Elegant. That's why sometimes I catch myself before saying something on stream because I can't produce whatever I'm thinking of. Although you guys are brilliant at reading my mind. Like I'll, I'll be talking about a movie or a game, but I'm just shy of the title. But when I describe what it is, everybody remembers, except for me. <laughs> Maybe it's camera shyness. It just can't come to me automatically. So we can assume Hanayome also gave you to the, or gave the mark to you. Do you recall encountering her? This is that creepy tall head bride. Something weird did happen right before I entered the forest. I stepped in the phone box on T Mountain. The phone box rang out of nowhere. Oh, it might have been because of that. The telephone box at that rest area is also in the rumors of Hanayome. But I, I didn't pick it up. It creeped me out, so I left. I was never able to give that person one final call because of that. Interesting. <laughs> okay, so uh, who, who are you talking about? It is not for children to know. Fine. So there are other phone boxes like that. What year does this take place? <laughs> you know, when I was in Japan, not so much phone boxes, but what I had a hard time finding was trash cans. Trash cans were extremely difficult to find when you were wandering around Japan, which was very annoying because we just had to carry our trash everywhere. But I guess that they had some big like bomb attacks years ago. And as part of fixing that, because they were hiding them in trash cans, they just got rid of almost all of the public trash cans. We found one in, uh, it wasn't Tokyo, in Kyoto. And we got a picture next to the only trash can we found downtown. It was fun. <laughs> Let's see. There are three that Hanayomi will call from. The one we went to in the A Highway parking lot is one. And one at the T Mountain Rest Area. That's the one Miss Christie went to. So we have to go to a bunch of these things. And um, Aita, where's the last one? At the park by T Apartment, apartment Complex. It's the only one inside the city. But why just those three locations? Dunno. The BBS I read didn't say. Okay, BBS. Phone booth. This has to be taking place in like the early 90s, maybe late 80s, if I had to guess. I don't know if the game ever told us a year. Um, mister. Do you really think Honey Yome is the one who gave us the marks? I mean, that's what our creepy doll told us, so what else can we go off of? I'll say, of course. But the rumors about Hanayomi go back five years, and no one's ever mentioned that if you got her call, you get a mark. Susie's right. Rumors about this mark thing only popped up super recently. So, you're saying Hanayomi hasn't always been giving out the mark? If that's true, I wonder what triggered the change. And Michael, having no public trash cans doesn't make sense to me. That would be really annoying. You know, it's also, it's interesting though. In Japan, it's very impolite to walk around and eat. So I guess, or drink. But to have like no public trash cans seem like that big of a deal because you're not actually wandering around with food all the time or anything. You have to actively throw away. But sometimes we'd walk into a shop, have something, and if they didn't have a trash can, we we're holding a bag of trash ourselves. Almost like when you pick up after your dog on a walk until we can get to a trash can. And uh, Frost, good thing they are experts on this ghost and know the entire trend of history. <laughs> Thank goodness I'd be lost. It, the one thing, though, everybody in Japan always seemed very focused and on the ball with what they had to do during the day, like on the bus or on the trains and walking around downtown. Nobody would look you in the eye. Everybody was like looking straight forward, marching to their own thing, moving real quick. Very go, go, go business. But at night, where we were staying, it got crazy. People were stumbling out of bars and vomiting and there was trash everywhere. But kind of like Disneyland, sometime in the middle of the night, 
a bunch of gremlins pop out and clean up all the trash, and it looked pristine the next day. It was incredible. But there was trash all over the floor because there's no trash cans. It's like somebody would put a piece of trash on the ground, and then everybody started dogpiling the trash on that same spot. It became like the designated trash spot, essentially. So, of course, I can't really say seen as I don't know about the spirits. A ghost helping people find what they're looking for. That's pretty strange. Definitely the definition of ghost story. Hey, Mr. Cadia, if those rumors are true, why don't we try asking where the stolen statues are? If we return them to their places, it might just save our lives. Search for the Buddha statues. If Christie's right, we might be able to escape the mark without fighting the spirits. That'd be great. Because I'm terrible at fighting spirits. That's why I got five deaths. <laughs> Mary, what do you think? A good question. Objects with human forms are easily able to gain inexplicable powers. Bleeding stone statues, cursed dolls, there are many types. Historical statues of gods and Buddhas would certainly be no exception. Asking Hanayome about them would be a good idea. So says the doll before her eyes that has an inexplicable power to talk. <laughs> Maybe it wouldn't be strange that Buddha statues could bring down the divine wrath. Lord Kadia, may I add... As I explained previously, your mark is... is different from the others. Vanquishing spirits seems to weaken your mark's power. It has been several days since she told me that I was going to die. Oh, Ellaby, we'll see you soon. Good luck on whatever you're working on. Taking care of the spirits we encountered is likely how I'm going... how I'm still among the living. Every time we take care of a spirit, it seems to give us more time to finish a chapter. What are you trying to say? I cannot say what the relationship between you and your mark and Hanato or Hanayome is. But it is true that in your best interest to track down spirits. I hope you will guide these mark bearers this evening as well. Can't really picture Christy and Ida facing off against the spirits by themselves. No, not at all. If they failed, then the child would suffer the deadly consequences. That would weigh heavily on me. No turning back. I'll figure something out. Thank you. Mary bows her head slightly. Oh, that's cute. Now, you should begin investigating Hanayomi. Why does she only call from these three public phones with an H city? Her secret may lie in the answer. You visited the park a lot already. Please investigate T Mountain and the park by T Apartment Complex. Their names: T Mountain, H Forest. It's like they're so like predictable. I don't know. They need to get more creative with these names. All right, new info to the spirit file. All right, so have we picked up anything new? Oh, ah, excuse me. Time change, messing with my sleep patterns. Um, we actually don't have anything in our inventory. It like took everything. Interesting. Are we supposed to go to bed? I'm not even sure why we really came back. Lord Ida, Lady Suzu, and Lady Christy. Hanayomi is likely the one that gave all of their marks. Please visit one of the public phones that rumored say Hanayomi calls. That's why we have to go to the phone booths. You may obtain a clue regarding the key that will end the grudge. Hmm. And Platypus, you have noticed sometimes Japanese games censor names intentionally. They did the same thing in Shin Harigami. Um... Is it because the names mean something bad in Japanese, if you see the English version? Or why did they actually censor it? I really don't know. Oops. Didn't mean to do that. I love how quickly you can skip the ch chat if you have to. Oops. Um, I guess we have to talk to her again to 
uh, ask that other question. Nope, that's all she says. Never mind. All right, I think we're ready to exit and go to those phone booths, right? We should probably save it again. Because we can. Ooh, so I think we have to do both of these. Rest area and park. We'll just start with rest area. And you don't think because it's bad? You will look up why they do that to see if you can find an answer. You know, they used to do that with graphics in games a lot. Like, if you look at Castlevania on the um, NES version, the original, it's actually like crosses all over the place, you know, to ward off vampires. But in the, I think, Super Nintendo Castlevania? Or no, maybe that was the arcade version. And then, like, the home version or something, they removed crosses or, or no no there's the Japanese versus the American release that's right the American version didn't have certain like religious iconography they wouldn't allow that I guess but the same company allowed it in Japan which is interesting okay the phone booth stands solitarily on the edge of the vacant rest area an endless sea of trees stand behind it Christy must have run to the forest after she heard the phone ring I can hear a dog howl from nearby. That wasn't a howl. It sounds almost sad, but I'm probably just imagining it. Hmm. Christy doesn't seem bothered by it. He's completely focused on the phone booth. I must have gotten my mark from Hanayomi back then. You better hope so. <laughs> but I was completely oblivious. I wasn't exactly in the right state of mind. I wonder, do you think we also took our doll with us again? Or is that just for that one little mission? And rumors say the phone is supposed to ring if you wait by it for a while. I'm guessing waiting outside doesn't count. You gotta actually go in the phone booth. You know, there was a movie in the early 20, early 2000s called, um, I think it was just called Phone Booth. And it was Colin Farrell basically in a phone booth talking to a terrorist like the whole movie but somehow they made it interesting <laughs> i have fallen asleep but it was um really late at night michael i was playing ace attorney i believe it was phoenix right i didn't i didn't actually fall asleep but i definitely started to like nod my head and slow down because i was reading as well i started to nod my head and just like saying complete gibberish. There's actually some really funny clips on the channel if you want to watch it. It's pretty good. They, they got a few of them. But yeah, it was random. Okay, probably not. It's only after I'd stepped in it. But the booth is too small for two people. Either I or Christy will have to go in. You aren't thinking I'll do it, are you? Dangerous jobs are best left to men. Hey, that's sexist. <laughs> Equal opportunities. Um, I guess I'll just have to go in. Crap. Do we have the yen we need? I'm guessing that's 10 yen. 10 yen's like a buck. That's a lot of money. And apparently the Japanese uses suffixes to explain what a place is. So like name and then something that tells you what it is. Oh, that's interesting. So they censor that last portion. I remember enjoying it too, Michael, but I haven't seen it since it came out. And when was that? Like 2003 or something? It's been a very long time. So I just remember there was like snipers involved and helicopters, I think. And I don't remember many of the main plot points, so I'd have to watch it again. I wonder if it holds up. So it's cramped inside and almost impossible to move around at all. I'd be a sitting duck if a spirit attacked me while I was here. The clouded glass makes it hard to see the outside. That just makes me more nervous. I wonder how long I have to wait until the phone rings. To pass the time, I glance around at the inside of the booth. There's a poster attached to the window. Help our investigation. On the night of 2-8-1990-X. Okay, so this takes place in the year... 1990X. <laughs> I'm thinking early 90s because they talked about a BBS and that wasn't a late 90s thing. So on the night of 2-8, an assault took place in the forest nearby. If anyone has gotten any info on this case, please notify H Police Department. 
<laughs> yeah, right? For us, that'd be great. Kind of reminds me in um, Half-Life Alex, you can actually use markers to like write on glass and whiteboards. It's super cool. In VR. So this was dated five years ago. Looks like something terrible happened here. There we go. The phone begins to ring. I hesitantly reach out and pick it up. The only sound I hear is the dial tone. No one is speaking. What's going on? That creepy ASMR chewy noise. We heard about that in the rumor. Suddenly, there's a strange noise. Instead of, what is it, Samara in the ring saying, seven days, it does this weird chewing thing. Crunting, smacking, like the sound of saliva as someone chews. <laughs> Don't like that noise. Did you see it? Oh, I could see that. Frost, it could be totally like bushes, like squashing on wet ground. Yeah. Or, Platypus, maybe it's all a ploy to make things seem more mysterious, like in a galaxy far, far away. <laughs> Tucked in the smacking is a woman's voice. The voice is creepy, cold, and chills me down to the bone. Is this Hanayomi? I think it's saying the same thing. Did you see it? She asks a second time. The rumors mentioned that I should say, I haven't seen it. I think that's what we're supposed to say. I don't know. If I say the wrong thing now, we could get killed. I'm going to go ahead and say, I haven't seen it. Very seriously, I say, I haven't seen it. Hmm. And the spirit comes back and asks, What do you want to see? Oh, yeah. If we want to, like, talk to a ghost or something. I don't know what we would say. What, what is our character's desire? I'm going exactly, or it's going exactly as the rumor said. Hanayome is supposed to tell you the location of whatever you're looking for. Tell me where Bigfoot is. <laughs> How about something like that? Um, Christy told me to ask about the Buddha statues that were stolen from H Shrine. <laughs> I'll give it a try. Oh, that smacking noise. Some people love it. Drives other people insane. How about you guys? Uh-oh. It is talking about the Buddha statues. Buddha statues. Lord Buddha. Doesn't your arm already have the mark of Buddha on or Buddha Buddha on it? Tell me, you want a new Buddha? Why are you doing that? Tell me, I'm always talking. Well, tell me, tell me, tell me. Tell me more. Tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me. Tell me. Jeez, that got intense fast. The line goes dead. Oh. That would be super cool, uh, Frost. Which, if you could pick one Pokemon to see in real life, what would it be? Hmm. The woman's scream is still ringing in my ears. I feel sick. It must be because of my brush with that blood-curdling insanity. Why didn't she answer my question? What was different from what the others asked? The mark on my arm burns dully, like it's reminding me that it exists. Maybe having this uh, is why she was acting strangely. Oh, Mew. Is that Mew 2, or is that like the original version of Mew? I only know that character from Smash Brothers, really. Um, 
And she did say something to the effect that Buddha gave me his this mark. Which is just too insane to differentiate between Buddha and mon a monstrous spirit. Or is this mark really the work of a defying wrath from the Buddha statues? <laughs> the original cuter one? Good, good. Because the one in Smash Brothers is kind of angry. I think that's probably a, an evolution of Mew. I wait a minute, a while longer, but the phone doesn't ring again. There's no point in staying here. And as soon as I leave the booth, Christy comes up on me. And Mewtwo is a human-made clone. Oh, it's, so it's not a uh, evolution of Mew, huh? Oh, that's interesting. I didn't know it was a totally separate character. You don't look well. What happened? I tell Christy about my conversation with Honey Yumai. What? That's not in the rumors. Christy's brow furrows in confusion. Should we check out the other border or the other phone books for now? Phone box? Maybe there's a clue there. We can also see if you can ask again. There's no time to get lost in thought. The last phone booth is in the park by the tea apartments in the other direction. Uh, we'll head there and after stopping at the mansion. And he's angry because of trauma. I would be too. <laughs> Somebody doing experiments on me, 100%. It's probably wise to ask Mary what she knows since it's on the way. The scouting, or the second phone box. I don't know if we've gotten to really explore this area. I guess it was never really mine to begin with. Okay, so it looks like we can go backwards from here. How do I bring up... Um, Oops, how do I bring up the menu here? Do not. I'm trying to like use my little circle to explore, but it doesn't seem to let me. Let's go ahead and save it. <laughs> We've done a lot there. There we go. Ah, yeah, we can't do that because I can only go down. So return to Cujo Mansion. Let's do this. Welcome back, Jada. Got everything you were working on done? Okay, let's talk here. I tell Mary what happened at the phone box. You say Hana Yome acted strangely. She called the spirit that cursed you with your Mark Buddha. I cannot say I know what I saw. Hmm. But from what you said, she will most likely not respond to your questions. That does not mean she does not understand you, however. We use any method available to obtain as much information as you can. Can I explore... Oh, excuse me. Can I explore this place at all? I don't think so. Like, we actually don't have any inventory right now, but when we did, we usually couldn't use it like that. And you got a homemade chocolate covered frozen bananas. Oh, that sounds so good, elegant. We actually started using frozen bananas in some smoothies, but you know, that's more healthy. Not like just straight up chocolate covered bananas. That sounds so good. And easier to eat than maybe chocolate covered strawberries. I don't know. Um, I guess we're done here. We're not going to sleep yet. Go ahead and exit. And I don't know if the Ukraine, or not Ukraine, um, how about that for? I wonder if, um, who these bikes actually belong to. Like, there was the old owner to this, but I thought it was just the one lady. Why are there two bikes here? And are we ever going to get to use them? We see them every single time. Okay, so we checked out the rest area. Let's go to the park. We haven't seen this one yet. I think the rest area, that's the one where we met those new characters, right? I see a small park tucked between all of the looming apartment buildings. There's no one here. I guess everyone's already asleep. They said the phone booth was from Hanayama, rumors, right? Elsie, you've only had chocolate-covered strawberries a few times? They're good, but strawberries spoil so fast. They do. Yeah, you gotta eat them within like 
three days often, otherwise they're already gone. Unless you freeze them, I suppose they can last a lot longer. Arbo, a wild Arbo has appeared. We were just talking Pokemon, Arbo. How are you doing, dude? How was your weekend? What you been up to? Anything uh, fun and exciting? Play any new games? Okay, would a spirit really appear in the middle of the city like this? Well, now that I'm here, I still have no idea why Hanayome hung up on me. <laughs> what a jerk! I followed the rumors exactly. Hey, Ellaby, welcome back, Ellaby. Where did I go wrong? I scratch my head. And you're getting your butt handed to you in Elden Ring, but that's so much fun. How far are you into the game now, Arbo? I finally, finally took out the first main boss. Madrick, I think his name was. He, like, jumps down off this big tower and talks to you. There's kind of a cutscene, if you know which one I'm talking about. I've done a few of the side bosses, but I think that's the first, like, one that you have to do that I was able to knock out. It was, it was tricky. I'm, like, level 32 or something like that now in the game. Uh-oh. This is the ghost talking to us. Don't adhere to the gossip. Defy it. Jeez. <laughs> they say if you play a visual novel for a while, mysterious chatters appear. Ooh. <laughs> you know, that's you're not wrong, Elegant. Uh, when I was first playing Doki Doki Literature Club, I actually had just started streaming as well. Um, I was playing with my wife. And... As we jumped in the game, that game messes with you and like your files on your computer and stuff like that. There's a lot of meta stuff. Somebody jumped into the chat with the name Monica and started saying things at the perfect time to relate to uh, scenes in the video game. As it was happening, I was thinking, wait, did they combine Twitch with this game too? What's going on here? It wasn't. It was just somebody trolling me. It was super fun though. I liked it. It was cool. Margit the Fell Omen, and he is the first major boss? Yes, Michael, I took him out. And now I'm exploring that castle that he has. But it's it's tough. It's definitely tough. So gossip, in other words, the rumors. What will happen if I don't follow the rumors? Christy, go back to the car. There's something I want to try, but it might end up backfiring on me. Oh, no. It, sure. I don't know what you're going to do, but please be careful. Oh, and I almost forgot. I have a message from Ita. Yeah? It's about the latest information on Hanayome from the BBS. He's using the internet to solve this. Early 90s internet. <laughs> Take a look. Christy hands me a note written by Ita. Don't talk about eyes or things like it when you're on the phone with Hanayomi. Don't talk about eyes or things like it. That's interesting. Oh, that's awesome, Arbo. I haven't done any farming at all, really. I tried to do a little bit of farming for... What do they call them? Smithing stones? But I wasn't getting any. This one time I had done a dungeon, I got a whole bunch of smithing stones from the monsters, and I thought they would drop them a second time, but they're not. They're being very stingy, so I'm having a hard time upgrading my weapons. And let's see, in the new version, they actually have a comment in Doki Doki if you have a program like OBS open. Oh, that's really cool. I love it when they do meta stuff like that, Elegant. That's super cool. Is the second boss even harder? Oof. Well, I mean, hopefully I'll be wiser. I'll be more powerful then. One thing I did not know, Michael, when I started the game, I started as a the name the first class you could pick from kind of the sword and shield character uh starts with a v i think um anyway that character he he starts off with pretty heavy armor and i didn't realize this he starts out with, off with a heavy load and my dodging was completely worthless and i didn't know why because i assumed the starting equipment was going to be okay for the character but it's not you actually have to unequip some of your armor you start off with just to have a normal load so you can actually dodge properly and move quickly. Because if you're at heavy load, you're dodging, you'll still get hit. It's so bad. <laughs> yeah, the big fat roll. Exactly. It was so bad. I kept getting killed. Vagabond. That's it. Thank you so much, Michael. You try to farm smithing stones too, but you haven't been able to. We're in the same boat, Arbo. Same boat. 
So if the call goes sideways somehow, don't say I, okay? P.S. Be best to avoid anything that even sounds like I. So if they say like the word cry, maybe don't say that because it kind of sounds like I. I don't know. Interesting. What? Don't say I. This is it? Yeah, that's all. Anyway, Ita said he was sure it would come in handy. I'll keep it in mind. And you think the intent is that you block most hits and tank the damage? I don't know if anybody can take damage in this game, Elegant. You can survive an extra hit or two with a lot of hit points and armor, but every monster, if you're not blocking properly, just does so much damage. And if it doesn't do damage and you're blocking, it does so much damage to your stamina, it's going to break your block in the middle of its combo and then start to hurt you. Dodging definitely feels like it's absolutely necessary in this game, I think. But... I'm also not great at FromSoft games. I've beat a couple of them, but I'm no expert. So Christy returns to the car. All right, let's wait for another phone call. I step inside and wait for the phone to ring. Don't say I. <laughs> yeah, like the letter I, exactly, Frost. There's a poster in this booth, too. Just like the one at the rest area, this one looks like it's been here for a few years. Young woman kidnapped. A young local woman was kidnapped close to this location. If you were a witness to this crime, please notify the police, MPD. Hmm, woman was kidnapped? Maybe she's the woman haunting these. February 8th, five years ago. I think the poster I saw at the rest area had the exact same date. Coincidence? I think not. Oh, we got the call. The phone rings. I grab the receiver and slowly pick it up. Ah, a nice ASMR. All right. <laughs> I hear noises like someone chewing gum from the other side of the phone. An icy cold voice speaks. Did you see it? I think we have to say no. Ah, <laughs> if you say... I saw it, that's using the word I, that'll get us killed. Let's say, nope. The line goes dead. Maybe that wasn't correct. <laughs> Dang it. I wait a while longer, but the phone doesn't ring again. I might have screwed up. I guess I should step out and try again. I'll wait outside for a bit and then try going back in. <laughs> wait for the ghost to reset itself, right? Uh, can we explore this area? Doesn't look like it. We can save it, though. I'm all about that save. How do I actually go back in? Phone booth. Phone booth. I can, like, leave this area? But I can't seem to actually interact with the phone booth again. My examine button is, like, missing. Maybe I am actually supposed to leave the area and then go back completely. So let's exit. Park. I think it was in the park. Buckbeak! What's going on, Buckbeak? Good to see you, buddy. I'm going very well. Hope things are good with you. How was your weekend? It could be a time thing, Elliot. I hate it when games do, like, real-time waiting. Oh, it's frustrating. Okay, don't adhere to the gossip. Defy it, huh? I repeat the mysterious words I heard to myself. Okay, I'll wait in the car. Okay, now I think it's like reset itself. Such a waste of gas, especially in today's economy. How much is gas where you guys are? Right now, for me, it's about six bucks a gallon in California. Christy returns to the car. Oh, that's right. There was some kind of weird advice uh, in Aita's message for me. If you get in trouble while on the phone with Hanayome, don't say I or anything that sounds like I. We, we avoided that, and she hung up on us. So I'm not sure. And Buckbeak, it's going all right. You just got done playing Mass Effect 3, and you're doing all the Dr. Bryson DLC. Oh, that's so cool. I heard 
I think it's called the Citadel DLC, is like really good too. I haven't tried that yet. Actually, Tajay is also playing Mass Effect as we speak. Even words with the, uh, with the sound are dangerous. Who knows if any of that will be helpful, but I may as well remember it. Crap, now I feel like I have to go against the grain and actually say the word I, because um, when I said nope, she just ignored me. So we step inside and wait for the phone to ring. Or she hung up on me. How rude. The phone rings. I grab the receiver and slowly pick it up. There's that chewing sound again. I hear a noise like someone chewing gum from the other side. An icy cold voice speaks. Same things as before. Oh, and Jumi, this puzzle is a little poorly translated. And by a little, I mean it's bad. <laughs> oh, do you mean like the text and trying to say like, don't say anything that sounds like I? Maybe doesn't mean literally like the word I. Maybe that won't be a problem. And uh, both of them, Michael, we actually cured them by getting rid of that first spirit. Their marks are gone and they can leave the mansion as soon as that happens. So they took off. And then the detective who was helping us later, he um, stuck with us one extra day. And when we took care of that one, he's like, this is too dangerous. He didn't have the mark anymore either. So he left. And Ellaby, you have a Doritos bag and you're not sure if you should eat right now or during the trip. I would personally, Ellaby, wait till the trip, especially because if it's a long drive, you don't want to eat a whole bunch right beforehand and then possibly have to use the restroom in the middle of the trip and then you have to pull over. I would definitely wait. Oh, it's not our eye. It's I and kanji. Oh, so how, how does that sound, Jimmy? I'm not even sure what word to use based on what I sounds like in kanji. And Buckbeak, at least at first you weren't interested. A bit slow at first, but once you got into it, it's okay. And now this is doing pretty good. Oh, that's so good. Nice. And you haven't finished it though. You're still in process, in progress. Hopefully you like it when it's all said and done. Okay, so let's go ahead and say I saw it. You saw it, didn't you? That was terrifying. Let's not do that ever again. You saw that thing of me? And then she still hangs up on us? Come on. The voice cuts off. Oh, geez. Something outside collides violently with the glass of the booth, but I can't see it. Just a bloody handprint. Oh no, here come our life and death decisions. <laughs> this is when I start adding to the death counter. Dun, dun, dun. Tell me, how did you see it? And Jumi, you may just tell me the numbers if you want, else you'll have to brute force it, unless this translation is much different than Switch. Oh, okay, we'll see. Yeah, yeah, I might need your help just to save time. With your own eyes or eyeglasses? A telescope? I saw... I'm going to say telescope. That doesn't sound like I. Like the word I, E-Y-E. Yeah, I guess let me try to do it once on my own, Jimmy. <laughs> the game's pretty good about loading you right there. It sounds like something's searching around outside the phone box. Hopefully it doesn't eat Christy. You saw it. You said you saw it. What color? A beautiful color? Red? Pink? Green? None of those sound like I. Um, is she talking about like when we saw her outside the phone booth with like the really tall head? I'm going to say pink. I guess I want to say pink. This is a total guess. <laughs> They're all very vague options. Hey, yeah, I'm a pro at this game. That's just 33% chance of guessing it right. You saw it. 
What kind of person are you? What's important to you? I have no idea what options these are going to be. Your dreams? Romance? Love? Which do you choose? Based on our character? I would have to say your dreams. I don't feel like we've had any kind of inkling towards romance or love at all in this game. We don't know much about our character, though, because of the amnesia. I'm going to go with my dreams. Oh! That was bad. That was bad. You know what? She's like a bride. She probably believes in love. Oh, we still barely made it. Okay, good. I didn't lose too much time. That was close. That was close. I should I should have been thinking about her more than me. It helps, Michael. It de yeah, if you can, even watching the stream and crank it up, it definitely helps having headphones on. The phone goes dead. The next I know, the bloody handprint is gone, and so is the ominous presence. It's creepy. The questions she asked me were strange. She was particularly anxious about what I had seen. I think I did a good job of not mentioning anything with eyes in my answer. Overly conscious over being seen. Oh, I guess my sounds like I. So that wasn't a good option. I shouldn't have chose my. Now that I think about that. And let's see, Buckbeak, you think there are two DLCs at the Citadel and the one you're on right now? And then another one that might be the more laid back one from what I've heard. Yeah, the one I think I've heard about Buckbeak was more of like an epilogue where you just get to like chat with everybody and have fun little missions to wrap up everybody's story post game, which sounds really fun and wholesome. Maybe that's where her secret lies. I exit the booth and Christy rushes up on me. My mark started hurting out of nowhere. Did it go all right? I tell Christy about what happened in the telephone booth. I've no idea what that means. Guess there's no way she'd know the answer. So they did give me some extra dialogue on this. When you played it, it just gave you the colors red, pink, green. No pondering beforehand. Oh, that's a bummer, Jimmy. Well, it's interesting that they patched it. I wonder if they've also patched the Switch version. I don't know if the PC version Steam came out later. I'd assume it's an upgrade for all of them. Hmm. Something's on the ground there. Sure enough, there's a folded up piece of paper lying near the booth. It looks like a piece of stationery. I don't think it was there before I went into the phone box. I pick up the paper and open it. Check this out. Two Psycho? Psycho? Psycho. That's like that uh, Sekiro. <laughs> it kind of reminds me of that, how it's spelled. spelled. And Buckbeak, can you believe that there were two Saw video games and there's a reason they didn't go past number two? Probably lack of interest. You know, I saw a review from one of those Saw games. It actually looked better than I expected. I forget which one he reviewed, but I would assume it would have been complete movie tie-in garbage game you know but it seemed like they actually put a lot of effort into it it wasn't too bad i'm not like a huge fan of the saw movies the first one was great and i saw a couple of the sequels and they kept getting worse and worse for me so i didn't continue watching them but uh might be interested in the game it seems like it would make a good video game the whole concept of saw okay i'll dispel all of your heartache which is what that says so forget that horrible incident and take your quiet rest up in heaven. It's pretty morbid. An incident. The posters I saw in the telephone booth mentioned something like that. Yeah, the missing woman. Could they be connected? I ask Christy what they think. Christy looks deep in thought. What is it? Oh, nothing. Well, we've checked out all the boxes, so let's head back to the mansion. Something still bugs me, though. Yeah. We should probably head back for now. Some new info. So you play both of them? Honestly, you can't remember them? Couldn't have been very great, then, if it left no lasting memory, right, Buckbeak? 
Um, okay, so we want to go back to the mansion. Hey, Mr. Cadia, you know those posters that a bit of stationery we found? Could they be linked to Hanayomi? That's what we thought back there. She might have been someone who was caught up in the incident and killed. Did you hear that noise? And if that's the case, then... Christy turns toward the shelves with files. Files full of articles on criminal cases. The dates were wrong five years ago, right? Then there might be an article on what happened here in these files. We could use more help. Maybe if Ita and Suzu can give us a hand? Go ahead and call them over. All four of us began reading through the files. The clippings range from the smallest dispute to the most heinous crime in H-City. Yeah, nice, Michael. Now you get the full experience, especially when the jump scares happened. <laughs> yeah, that's, there's a couple things you can do to make horror games scarier. Number one, play in the dark. Unfortunately, I cannot do that. If I were to play in the dark, you guys would not be able to see me. Because to do green screen, to make myself look somewhat decent, I gotta have a lot of lights on. But I do love playing horror games in the dark. Number two, headphones. Or better yet, if you don't have neighbors you're going to piss off, Crank up the speakers. You know, headphones are great, especially when you don't want to bug people. But if you have a good set of speakers, I think a nice surround sound system is always going to be better than headphones because this volume and sounds are so much more full and you get the bass. And when the bass is shaking things around, oh, it's so intense. I should wear a creepy hood for horror games. <laughs> so like, like a big hood that kind of comes over my face so I can see the game. Like this maybe, but you guys can't really see me. I could probably cover up to about here. And I can still see my monitor. Okay. <laughs> that could be fun. I actually have an idea. I'm not sure if I'm going to do it or not. But I kind of want to replay some of those Walking Dead games. The Telltale ones. Because I never finished all those. I only played the first couple. And then maybe cap it off with that Walking Dead VR game. Because I've been wanting to play that for a very long time. And once you found out you could plug headphones into the PS4 controller, that was heaven for me. Yes, I'm so glad that controllers have that option. That's super cool. Okay. But all these articles are dated five years ago or earlier. Did they get stored in the garbage because they're so old? After a while, I found it. The victim's name is Psycho. Psycho. Uh, the date is February, five years ago. Gotta be it. Christy lays the file out on the desk, and we all peer at it. Well, that looks creepy. Look at that face at the bottom left of that article. The five articles about the incident that happened five years ago. Vic victim's name was Siko Hagisawa. Apparently, she committed suicide in the forest by H Castle on the eve of her wedding, that's so sad. Oh, no. She was in her dress when she was found. Uh-huh. Suzu, you probably shouldn't read anymore. It's pretty bad. Thanks, Ida. But... Oh, this is Ida talking. That's right. <laughs> Much. Thank you, Frost. I couldn't pronounce any foreign language to save my life. But I also don't mind if you correct me if it's a word I have to say a hundred times. Some of these names you say once and they're gone, but if I'm like always saying the same word, feel free to correct me. And there's a Walking Dead game where you get to play as Daryl Dixon in the first person. I can't remember what it's called. And you don't think it was well received when it came out in 2013. I think I know the one you're talking about, Buckbeak. There's also a new Walking Dead um, VR game called Onslaught. That one I heard isn't very good. But the first VR Walking Dead game... Uh, what is it called? I forget the subtitle to it, but... Oh, Saints and Sinners, I think? That one's actually supposed to be really good. That's the one I have. So, uh, I want to know more about Hanayome. I feel like I need to do this. She's cringing, but she sounds determined. So cringe. <laughs> Between this and sneaking out at night, she's a surprisingly brave kid. It's rather odd for someone her age. I remember now. This happened back when I used to be a news anchor. Oh wait, that was Christy talking. I can never tell who's talking. 
Christy mutters just loud enough to hear. Then do you know the whole story? And you took a few years of Japanese, so if you aren't sure, you can try to give me the proper one. <laughs> Cringing but determined, that's me. <laughs> Thank you, I appreciate it, Frost. And I've been to Japan, but I didn't spend much time or effort learning the language, just a few pleasantries and that was it. So when it comes to names and stuff, get it at all. Survival instinct, that does sound familiar, Michael. In 2013, that must have been PS3? Maybe PS4. I think the PS4 came out in 2013. And the Xbox. So maybe it came out for those. I'm not sure. So it was horrible. It's hard to recount. Or maybe this is the news anchor woman. Uh, a woman was abducted by a gang while she was walking her dog. They brought her to the forest and assaulted her. Four people found her battered and staggering along the road the next day. The dog was run over and killed near the forest when it chased after them. Oh, poor puppy. That's horrifying. Yeah, but that wasn't the end of Seiko Hagisawa's misfortune. Ita somberly cuts in. His usual grin is nowhere to be found. It's well known in some circles, but her assault was photographed. The pictures were sent to her fiance. That's messed up. They threatened to make them public if he didn't pay up. I heard he gave them a ton of money to get the photos and the negatives. Is that true, Christy? Yeah, I heard that as well. Because of all that, Miss Seiko had a mental breakdown, and in the end, she hung herself. Brutal. And Buckbeak, you don't remember a whole lot about that Walking Dead game, but you remember not hating it as much as you might because you're a little bit uh, biased because Daryl Dixon is your favorite character in The Walking Dead. Oh, that's cool. Is the new season out yet? I have I took a long break, and then I started to catch up on Walking Dead again, and I got all the way to where Netflix has up until about like three or four months ago. I forget when I finished watching it, but I think it's season 10 or something I'm missing. I don't know. Looking forward to actually... Wrapping it up, though. I think they're almost done. Oh, it was a PS3, Xbox 360 game. 2013, that sounds about right. Unless it was going to be like a launch title, which apparently it wasn't. For PS4. Okay. She'd been an, a serious, honest woman, so she just couldn't bear it. That's so sad. The cruel fate of a woman attacked before her wedding. And then blackmailed. We fall silent as that reality weighs on us. Um... <laughs> Suzu timidly speaks up, her face pale. Maybe there's a connection between what happened to Miss Hagisawa and Hanayomi's phone boxes? Well, yeah, there was like a bride that we saw. I mean, that's obviously her, right? According to this article, the incidents that wrecked her life took place near each phone box. She was abducted by the park and assaulted by the rest area. She was found wandering near the park parking lot by a highway. The phone booths connect Hanayome and Seiko Hagasawa. The coincidence sends a shiver down my spine. So that note we found by the telephone booth, did Seiko's fiance write it? Most likely. What's strange is it is there and not where she committed suicide. Did Honey Yomi put it there? Maybe she was telling us something. I have no clue how spirits think, but if Suzu's right, then that note is an important clue for us. And let's see, Buckbeat. Right now it's season 11 if you have AMC Plus. I do not. And uh, plus 14 episode is getting ready to come out. But you're catching it on cable, so episode 13 will be Sunday for you. That's awesome. Yeah, me waiting on Netflix, I'll have to wait probably another year or something to catch up. Your internet connection sucks where you live. Uh, you live in a hole, but then don't. <laughs> That's, it does, does that make streaming hard, Buckbeak? You know, actually, um, if you have bad internet, usually Netflix streaming or YouTube is easier than Twitch streaming. Because with Twitch streaming, you can't really buffer it very much where with Netflix you can buffer for minutes and then if your internet gets spotty you can still watch the show to a point I seem to recall Miss Seiko's fiance was a famous musician as a result 
The case was widely publicized at the time. It happened right after they returned from a romantic trip to Greece. Old ladies were sobbing about how it made how it made it all more tragic. And the poor dog they brought on the trip died heroically as well. <clears throat> so where's the fiancé now? Well, he began acting strange due to the shock and then went missing. Some say her suicide was uh, to follow him. But he wasn't the only one who disappeared. It sounds like all the culprits went missing too. Hopefully the husband got them. You hear about that online too? <laughs> Not for what we're talking about right now, Michael. That's a terrible quote. And season 11 will be the final season. Nice, Buffy. Um, I'm watching Ozark on Netflix right now. If you guys haven't watched it, I highly recommend it. It only has four seasons. We just started it a few weeks ago. And we are in season three right now. And um, season four got split into two halves. I think the last half of season four comes out next month to Netflix. So we're going to wrap up the show right when we get there, which is great. <laughs> that one's even worse, Frost. <laughs> this is my choking spot. Based on what's going on in the story, these are all way too topical. What games do I... Well, I guess I do want know what games I always play on stream. That's why we get these terrible quotes. Okay. <laughs> the internet wasn't the same back then. They were only hubs. He was talking about when he used BBSs. I used BBSs when I was a kid. Hubs, like pre-internet chat rooms? Everyone was talking about it on the occult hubs back then. There was one person in the community who knew way too much. I think he was one of the culprits. He brought up a bunch of things, like taking pictures and all that. And I bet... Uh, oh, and I bet those pictures, those were pictures of the assault. Yeah, that's right. After they were finished, those assholes got out a camera and took pictures of her, her face soaked with tears. The whole time she yelled, don't look, don't look. Don't look, huh? Honey, Yomi has an extreme reaction to being seen by others. He kept going on about it night after night until he suddenly stopped posting when the husband kidnapped him and murdered him, right? People who knew him said they couldn't contact him at all. Those guys deserve to die, but it's still really creepy, you know? And Buckbeak, so YouTube works for you 24 seven, but uh, which for whatever reason, Twitch only works at night for you and it won't work during the day, no matter what. And you said you have kind of spotty internet, Buckbeak? Probably because Twitch is so much more reliant on having good bandwidth. If your bandwidth kind of sucks during the day because there's too much traffic going on, yeah, you just can't do Twitch or you have to drop the quality very low. Like if you hit that little cog at the bottom, if you're ever buffering on stream, you can sometimes hit that and choose a lower bit rate and it'll work better for you. It'll look blockier, but it won't buffer, hopefully. But yeah, the way, the, the way Twitch is live, you can't buffer more than like a second or two. Unlike YouTube, you can buffer minutes of data. Okay, suddenly a line from the note pops into my head. I'll dispel all of your heartache. Oh, I forgot about that. What could that mean? Hey, Christy, do you happen to know exactly where in the forest Seiko killed herself or himself? I was a reporter at the time, so I did go to the location, but that was five years ago. I don't remember exactly. Who was walking around and making those footstep sounds? There's nobody else in this house, in this house besides the doll, and the doll can't walk. <laughs> I thought everybody else is here in the room with us. I feel like it went west from that big arch at the entrance. So you're really going to go? Yeah, we might be able to figure out something about Hanayome. Fine, I understand. I've had my fill of that forest, but I suppose we have no other leads. New info was added. All right, I think we're heading back to the forest now. Can I save it here? Uh, we'll save it in the forest. <laughs> I'm sure we'll be fine going there, right? I'm not going to get attacked immediately. Although we have been attacked in the car before, so it's scary. 
And uh, Buckbeak, so far the second best part of season 11. You think episode 9 is the best of the season? Oh, that's cool. You know, for me, Buckbeak, the show, like, I thought up to like the first season of Negan was all still really good. And then somewhere halfway through the Negan stuff, I started to drop off a little bit of interest, especially like when they introduce all those trash people and a few other groups. And then that whole thing escalated and climaxed. And then I got interested again. I actually thought it kind of got better when it had those, what do they call them? The, the people that wear the skins stuff. Anyway, I thought that got more interesting and I, I got more into it. So I'm, I'm definitely curious to finish it off. Okay, this is more awkward than I thought. Being out alone with someone who, until recently, was planning to kill herself. Do you have something you want to say? She noticed right away. Was I being that obvious? No, not really. It's fine. You don't have to hide it. You're wondering if I still want to kill myself, aren't you? The Whisperers, yes. Yeah, when they first introduced the Whisperers, that was really creepy. And it seemed like such an unstoppable force. I thought that was pretty cool. It's like, I feel like... The Walking Dead was having this problem of like, they would go someplace new, they'd be safe, introduce bad guys, they have to move, do it again and again. It kind of get got very repetitive. But the Whisperers are definitely a unique kind of enemy, and I thought that added a nice twist to the show. Is this a woman's intuition? <laughs> no, maybe I'm just crap at hiding things. Don't worry, I don't anymore. People hate it when things are forced on them, right? doesn't matter what it is. Yeah, just ask Ukraine. I can trust you, right? Yes. At least for now. The hell, it means you're going to betray me later? I don't like that. Here's hoping she keeps feeling the same, at least while we're together. Just then, the tires hit a bump on the road. That sounded creepy. I could see a square gray object in the back seat through the rearview mirror. Huh. Is that thing back there yours? No. That's Ida's CD cassette player. Huh? Why something like that? He said we might need music during the drive. And then... And then went and put it in here himself. But we don't have any CDs or tapes. Can I turn on the radio? No, I'll pass. The conversation grinds to a halt after that. It's like there's an invisible person between us. After falling silent for a while, Christy finally speaks up again. It only makes sense for the conversation to turn one direction. It's rather worrisome, don't you think? That after all this time, they don't know. Who doesn't know what? Those two. They think the spirit just helps you find things. What a naive fairy tale. Yeah. Christy is exactly right. You quickly become disillusioned once you actually face a spirit. But thinking about it, wouldn't that be the best? Let's see, and Buckbeak, even though the Whisperer's arc was pretty much uses the same plot type device as any other arc, it was way just an interesting one for sure. Yeah, I mean, obviously they're all gonna be have some similarities and how they put everybody in trouble and whatnot, but it just seems so much of a different type of enemy than anything else. I, I I feel like the characters are more in danger. And that's what I liked about Game of Thrones and a few other shows, is that characters did not have plot armor, if you know what I mean. Plot armor is when characters are so important to the story, you're never worried they're gonna die. And maybe one character a season they might take out, but it won't be a huge shock. And it's just not, the stakes are pretty low. And I felt that a lot during Walking Dead. Um, in the beginning, I had no idea who was going to survive, but then once they kind of had their set of popular characters, they seemed to be invincible. Every time they got swarmed by zombies, I was never worried they were going to die. It's like, ah, you're going to be fine. You'll get out of there. And they did every single time. And then maybe during the climax of the season, some character might die. But that's what the plot armor kind of does. It kind of hurts the vibe of the show and the, the stakes. But Game of Thrones, like throughout the majority of that show, nobody had plot armor. There are so many characters. I'm like, oh, there's a main character. He's dead. Oh, she's like really important. She's dead. <laughs> it's like, okay, I just never know what to expect. But 
it's like a two two edged sword. I understand why shows have plot armor, because kind of like what you're saying, your favorite character being Daryl. What if they killed him in season three? Like that would have lost so much popularity of the show, so much merchandising, so much just the want for people to keep watching it. So it's give and take. Like if you kill characters, it's very believable, but you you, you can definitely ruin the show for some of your audience at the same time. So it's very tricky, fine line to follow. Okay, Christy looks at me in shock. Wait, what are you saying? I just mean, our lives are on the line here. Would you stop joking around? Sorry. She's furious at me. But it looks like she was telling the truth about not wanting to die. That's good. She's got too much pride. Someone like that would never commit suicide. What's so funny? Nothing. Will we make it back again? I stare at the headlights and contemplate where we're going. You see, 100%. 100% buckbeat. So, like, even though I'm never worried about Daryl, no matter what situation he gets in, at the same time, I can see why they wouldn't want to kill him off. That sigh was pretty deep. I can't believe we're here again. At least I can feel better knowing he's not around anymore. I almost remind her about Hanayume, but I stopped myself from opening my mouth. <laughs> Good idea. I don't want to break her tenuous calm. Okay, it's supposed to be west of the gate, which would be going left. I look to the west of the gate again, but there's no sign of a trail strange. Maybe I'm remembering wrong. When I came here researching an article, there was a path to the west. Suddenly, Christie's face stiffens. What's wrong? I, I feel cold all of a sudden. Uh -oh. oh my god, what is that? Is that a wolf? Or a dog? <laughs> I have no idea what that is. I follow their gaze and see a low shadow dashing out from the darkness. A dog? It certainly feels like one. It kicks up the dirt with four legs, but it looks off somehow. Its fur long and disheveled, and from certain angles, its face looks human. The dog stares at us, growling softly. What is it? Are you trying to tell us something? <gasps> What is it, Lassie? <laughs> is Timmy stuck in a well? <laughs> Take us to him. And uh, Frost, do you think Game of Thrones is a different story, given that it was based entirely off of an existing novel until they ran out of material? And The Walking Dead is based on the comics, but deviates in many ways early on. That's true. I heard Game of Thrones followed the books pretty well until the books ran out. There are some deviations, but it followed pretty well. And then they just had to kind of do their own thing. They were following, from what I had understood, they were still following cliff notes from George R. R. Martin, but none of the details were fleshed out. They just kind of knew the main plot points that were supposed to happen. And yeah, he still hasn't finished those books, Buckby. I don't think he ever will, to be honest. And where season 11 is, is actually catching up to where the end of the comics happened. Oh, that's really interesting. I never knew the comics actually ended. I thought they just kind of went on indefinitely. Yeah, they ran out of material around season five or six, and they hadn't written those novels. And you don't mind them changing things for the TV show versus the comics. It kind of keeps it fresh. It, it's so interesting. Like, I understand that, too. Some people are like, ah, you're different from the comics. I hate it. But at the same time, like, if you already know the comics, wouldn't it be kind of cool to see, like, a different take? different surprises not everything is exactly what you expect i don't know i kind of think that's kind of a neat thing to be honest okay you're being too gentle with it you need to use a sound firm you need to sound firm when you talk to a dog act like it's master weaker dogs like to bark right so ignore it and stay quiet so ignore it and stay quiet huh i guess that's true for humans too powerful people tend to ignore others Okay, I'll keep that in mind. The dog barks loudly, then vanishes into the western underbrush. That's where we're going. The moment, oh, excuse me, the moment it's gone, 
The chill in the air dissipates like it was never there. Was it trying to guide us like the bunny rabbit? Maybe. I shine the flashlight on the spot where the dog disappeared. A now familiar pain shoots through my wrist. Oh no, we're running out of time. The mark's color grows more vivid. A few hours left until death closes in. That's not good. There's probably not much time left. We better hurry. Let's check the bushes over there. Oh, I finally have control. I have not had control of the game for a very long time. There's a thicket of trees next to the gate. With the dog gone, I push my way into the underbrush. I spot the traces of what used to be a path. You could barely call it one at this point. This must have been the closed hiking trail. The path goes west from the gate. That's right, I remember now. This is the path I took before. That dog, was it trying to show this to us? Who knows? Anyway, let's get going. I need to save it <laughs> before we get in trouble. There we go. Let's see, and Buckbeak. What's funny is that you haven't even read a single comic from A Walking Dead after the event happens in the TV show. You like to look to the comic information to see how it's different or similar. You know, I actually prefer to watch a movie or TV show of something before I read the book. And I don't read enough, so that's part of it too. But a lot of times I like to go back and read a book for a show that I really liked because nine times out of ten, the book is better. Not always, but nine times out of ten. So rather than reading the book and then being disappointed with the movie because it's not as good, I like enjoying the movie for what it is fresh and then reading the book and getting an even better experience and then appreciating that as well. I kind of feel like I get two wins versus a win and kind of a loss, which sometimes feels that way to me when a movie just doesn't live up to the book. Okay, anything hidden in this forest? No? All right, onward. And upward. Oh, we got a fork. Um, Let's go to the left. Because that looks like a dead end. What's this? There's something in the grass at the foot of the tree. It's a wad of paper. Uh, Look at it. Oops, wrong button. Feel it. I push the grass aside and pick it up. I found a worn out talisman. More, what was it called? Scared juice or whatever? <laughs> the stuff that keeps us from going crazy. Soul power. That's right. The worn out talisman crumbles silently in my hand. Let's go this way. This is kind of a dead end here. What is that? I shine the light on the grove of trees in front of us and catch a glimpse of something odd. Huh? What is that? Something's posted there can't make it out from here. I move forward for a closer look. Oh crap. Are these all the people that like bullied the woman? All thought in my mind ceases. It's as if I'm unable to process what I'm seeing and my brain comes to a halt. Are these photos? There are a bunch of pictures of different people posted to the tree. But they're all, all these photos have nails in the eyes. That sounds like the work of this ghost. It keeps saying, don't look at me. And it doesn't like the word I. It's just as Christy said, for some bizarre reason, each photo has a person with nails driven through both eyes. Attached to the nails is some kind of tape. Oh, I see that there in the middle. Cold sweat drips down my back. What kind of grudge would cause someone to do something like this? Hey, all the people in these pictures, are they all men? Christy mutters are just loud enough to hear. Huh? I look over the photos again. A good number of them are deteriorated, so they could be hard to make out. But they may be right. Yeah, looks like it. 
All the subjects are men. That's clearly not a coincidence. I feel a little dizzy and step back. Though, through my blurry vision, something flashes in light from the flashlight. What's wrong? Nothing. It's just over there. Something sparkled up there. Something might be there. We should check it out. Ooh, what did I miss? Seriously, Michael. <laughs> I think we're going to find a lot of corpses with their eyes gouged out. And man is shocked at nailed photos on a tree when we have been seen beehives made of people. Right, Frost? 100%. I think that was still the most disturbing thing we've seen in the game so far. Way worse than people, like, being turned into plants and stuff for the first chapter. Okay, something's in the grass. Feel it. I feel around in the blades of grass. Got an instant camera. This should be useful. I've hit the switch before I realized, and a red light appears. Apparently, that means the flash can be used. It must still have battery left. Not that we're going to take any pictures with it. Oh, excuse me. Why not? Why won't we take pictures with it? You're right. I turn it off quickly and stuff it in my bag. I decide it's wise not to mention the dried blood that stalked at the bottom of it. Ew. That's police evidence right there. To see is to perceive light. That's true. In a physics sense, that is what seeing is. <laughs> Everything you can look at, you're just seeing light. Just bouncing off of everything in the world. That's why ray tracing makes games look so realistic. That distant voice echoes in my head. True. Seeing something means you're seeing the light is uh, reflecting. But what does that have to do with Hanayome? I guess if you have your eyes gouged out, you can't see light, huh? And how are mirrors real when our eyes aren't real? <laughs> boggles the mind, right? Okay, that was probably the only thing here to look at. Although, can I do anything more with this? Let's feel it. I grab the tape that's wrapped around one of the nails and take a good look at it. It looks like audio tape that's been pulled out of a cassette. Can we take it? I grab the... T oh no, we can only look at it. Hmm. Hmm. You think you'd be able to take that and then maybe find an empty tape cassette or something. Um, let's look. All the photos are of men. There's blood everywhere. Does it belong to the person who put the nails in? Can we take a picture of this? I take out the instant camera. Can't think of any way to use it. Okay, we don't need to use it right now. I think we're done here. Okay, so from that dead end, I think we're going this way. Left? Because I think we took... Puppy. I hear a low growl from somewhere. I can't see what's making it, but it seems to be watching me. Oh, we did see the dog at the gate. I'm not sure why, but I feel an intense hostility directed toward me. What do we do? Something's coming. The instant Christy speaks, the growling grows distinctly quieter. Except it doesn't look like it'll let us through. Let's turn back. We retreat without trying to force our way past. I wonder if we have to find some item to like feed the dog or something. It just needs treats, that's all. Okay, well, I think we can only go backwards. Although, this is just going the same way we came from. Man, I'm so tired. Stupid time change. Has the time change messed with any of you guys, or are you doing okay? Uh, what do I do here? We're at, like, the exit. I thought I got that, Jumi. That's where we got the camera, right? They said there was something else there, and then I got that instant camera. Oh, it doesn't even let me go north. I have to go west. This isn't the right way. 
<laughs> well, that's good. They don't let you waste too much time. Oh, that was the bushes, not the tree. Okay, let's get back to that spot. My bad. Okay, it was to the left. And here's where we found that. I did th think I scanned the trees. Oh, it's right in the middle. Okay. Didn't scan close enough. Thank you, Jimmy. Something up in the branches of the tree is reflecting light. Something must be stuck in the branches. The only way we'll be able to check it out is to climb up the trunk. Are you thinking about climbing the tree? No. Actually, I was thinking about you climbing the tree, Christy. <laughs> there aren't any cavities, knots, or branches held within. It'll be hard to climb up it. So, I would assume boost your partner up, right? Is she going to get killed? Hopefully not. But climbing the tree seems like it'd be impossible. And Buckbeak. Uh, years ago when you watched Season 7 and 8 of Walking Dead, you initially thought Season 7 was better than 8, but rewatching both of them back to back, uh, you actually changed your opinion and think 8 is better than 7. Both of, them, both of them are still bad seasons with great episodes. Yeah, and that's what's interesting, Buckbeak. It's like even the seasons that were like kind of losing me, there were still really cool moments. Maybe not like an entire episode I loved, but like certain parts of episodes that were just fantastic. And Michael, you also didn't get much sleep last night because of the time change. You honestly wish they'd get rid of daylight savings. So I forget, where are you again, Michael? In California, I could have sworn we voted to get rid of it, but it hasn't happened. And I don't know how many years it's supposed to take for that to happen in our state. But I also thought I saw something like at a more national level of getting rid of it. We really should because I've read articles that like it actually makes things dangerous. Like, you know, if you're now waking up and going to work an hour early all of a sudden or you're coming home from work and you're more tired than normal, like you don't want tired people on the roads. So that's even more of a problem. Oh, you're in Tennessee. OK, nice. Um, so, yeah, it's just bad overall. I hate it. I mean, of course, the fall one is nice because it feels like you gain that hour. But it still messes with your sleep schedule. I, I just think we should have daylight savings time all the time. Where we get the nice long summer days. And then if it gets dark early in the winter, so be it. It, it is what it is. Okay, let's boost our partner. Up. Um, this is just between us, but I weigh... She whispers in my ear. Okay, that's off the table. <laughs> what? How much could she possibly weigh? Can we, like, look at her stats? We'll check that out later. But, like, I can't imagine she's more than, like, 130, 140 pounds. You're not, like, lifting her over your head. Just give her a boost, you know? Okay. Um, we'll climb it ourselves. I take a deep breath and jump at the tree. And Platinum, how you doing, Platinum? Welcome. How was your weekend, dude? I struggle to reach for a while and manage to touch a branch until I crash to the ground with a spectacular thud. Ow. Ugh. I told you. Okay, let's ask her to do it. I refuse. There's no way I can climb that. Looks like that's not going to work. We just have to boost her, right? Ask her one more time. Christy frowns at me. Looks like that's not going to work. One more time. Nope, same thing. Oh, I'm doing really good, Platinum. Life is good. I'm a little tired, like I was saying, from the time change and everything. I usually wake up at 5.30 in the morning for work. But because of the time rolling back, it feels like I'm waking up at 4.30 in the morning. <laughs> that's, that's pretty dang early. So I'm better to go or go find someone like oh, I didn't think about that, Jumi. You've got that little kid, just throw her right up there. Okay. Let's forget it. I give up and back away. I forgot that we could change partners. <laughs> Honestly, Michael, with like how many cults and stuff that we have in this game from time to time, they're all gonna be terrible quotes. Oh, you were close. You have to do it with a uh, yes. No! Oh. 
<laughs> you nailed it, Platinum. From Star Wars. Phantasma would be so proud of that. Okay, so let's go back to the mansion. And let's change our partner to... Ita! I'm sure he'd climb the tree. No, we need Suzu. Did I switch to her? Yes, I did. Okay, good. And let's go ahead and save it while we're here, too. Just in case. Star Wars is good stuff. What's your favorite Star Wars movie, Platinum? Back to the forest. And Buckbeak, a couple days ago, you got the courage to once again get back to destroy all humans, and you were already in Capital City, close to the last level you were stuck on for months on end. Buckbeak, did you watch my streams of that game? That was probably the hardest game I think I've ever streamed. Now, I think I've played games that were overall harder than that game, but the last couple bosses in that game, I think I've died more times than anything else on stream. Oh my gosh, Platinum, thank you so much for the cheers, buddy. I appreciate that. Let me drop you guys some tokens there. You don't really have a favorite? You just love the lore overall? Nice, nice. Yeah, Star Wars. Platinum played the, uh, uh, what's his name? Darth Vader. No! Sound effect. And yeah, we had to talk about some Star Wars. Okay, so we want to go left. And then I think it's forward and then to the left again. Nice catch, Phantasma. Perfect time to be summoned. Um, I like this. Oh, there's a timer on that, Platinum. So you can't do it for, I think, like five minutes. And that's where you found this channel when we were playing it. Oh, that's so cool. Nice. And you warned me it was pretty hard. That's right. It wrecked me. I definitely had a very hard time beating that game. But, and it, it was like a late stream. So, like, I had no work the next day. I stayed up until, like, three in the morning or four in the morning or something. I never streamed that late. But I was determined to finish the game. <laughs> we were so close. <laughs> Turned it into like a 10 hour stream, I think. Okay, so let's boost up our partner. If if that's all, then okay, I'll try. I squat at the base of the tree and let her climb up on me. Up you go. I stagger a bit, but manage to stand. I feel like I'm one of those trees now. Can you reach? Just a little to the right. I'm almost there. Eek. Oh, and she dies. No. <laughs> Suzu reaches as far as she can with her hand, and I lose my balance. We both crash to the ground. Are you okay? I'm fine. Um, here. Suzu shows me her hands. It's holding the object that was stuck in the branches. A dog collar. There we go. That's what we need. Collar. It makes me think of that dog we saw before coming here. Does this belong to that dog? I wonder who threw it away. Who knows? As I'm putting it away in my bag, I spot an inscription on the inside of the collar. Renta? Does that say Renta? It's kind of hard to read that first letter. How are you supposed to pronounce that? <laughs> She's not going to answer that. Okay. And whenever something mentions Star Wars within an 8,000 mile radius, when you're listening or when you're standing, you listen. <laughs> Just, if you need to summon Phantasma, we know how. And you can't watch Renda the Sith, though, because of the burning. <laughs> and you love the book because of the eye burning from all the tears, right? And Buckbeak, your favorite Star Wars game has to be Jedi Fallen Order. They did such a great job with that. And your favorite Star Wars movie would have to be Revenge of the Sith and Return of the Jedi. And Kortor was your favorite, but Fallen Order was great. And you cried when John played it too. It's, it just hits you, right? It just hits you. Oh no, Jumi, I'm scared. I'm guessing that wasn't the puzzle. There's more to this. Okay, so here's where the dog is. I hear a low growl from somewhere. Oh, that makes sense. More of a PTSD kind of thing, Phantasma. I gotcha. I can't see what's making it, but it seems to be watching me. See, this is all repeat stuff. What should we do? The instant Suzu speaks, 
<sighs> the growling grows distinctly quieter. I remember the photos. All of them were men with nails in their eyes. I don't know what that has to do with the dog, but if those pictures demonstrate the hatred that saturates this place. If I'm with Suzu, it might react differently, because it hates men, kind of like uh, that first ghost we were tackling. It won't mind Suzu being a young girl. But what about Christy? <laughs> Didn't seem to care about her. I consider my options. Let's show the collar. Why not? Let's see what happens. <laughs> I would hope so, Phantasm. I would hope so. The worst I've ever been burned. I've had some really bad sunburns in the past where it blistered and everything, but the worst one I remember from a pure pain standpoint, like instant pain. One time I was heating up some instant noodles that's like in that styrofoam cup. I was pretty young. And I, I think it was the 4th of July, too. And um, before we were going to go see fireworks, I was having one as a snack. And I grabbed the styrofoam and I uh, pinched it a little bit too much. And the, the lid wasn't on very tight, so the liquid poured over and hit my hand a little bit. Just enough to, like, shock me. I didn't expect it. And as a terrible reaction, I just gripped the noodles really hard. Just like, oh, God, what happened? So I pierced the styrofoam, and it just bubbled over and covered my hand in hot, boiling water and noodles. Let's just say the rest of that day, I couldn't do anything. <laughs> Did not get to go see fireworks. I just had my hand bandaged and it was an excruciating pain. It sucked. And uh, Buckbeak, you believe I died less during Fallen Order than I did during the last boss of Destroy All Humans? 100%. 100%. I did. I probably died more in uh, Destroy All Humans than I did in Crash Bandicoot, to be honest. And I died a lot in Crash Bandicoot. And yours was an extremely bad sunburn, and you had cancer because of it, and it was awful. Oh my gosh. That sucks, Phantasm. Well, hopefully they got that all taken care of. Skin cancer is no joke. Okay, let's show the collar, see what happens. I've got an idea. I take the collar out of my bag. Maybe it's a safe bet that the spirit was born here, so the dog is likely tied to this collar. I face the general area of the dog... The dog barking is coming from and uh, show it the collar. The dog appears like a gust of wind. Whoa! Before I can blink, it steals the collar from me. Oh crap. <laughs> Wait, do I have to talk to the dog? What's going on? I'm curious, Phantasma. Based on the bad sunburn after it was cleared up, how did you know you had cancer right away? When I try to quickly jump away, I hear Suzu call out to me. Mr. Caria, Mr. Cadia, don't move. But I don't catch the rest of it. The dog rushes at me. So fast it looks like it's gliding over the ground. Oh crap, don't move. Don't move. Stand still. <laughs> Kick it. The dog stops in its tracks. It seems confused that I'm not reacting and just standing still. It's a T-Rex. It can only see motion. If we stand still, it doesn't know where we are. <laughs> it's got some weird hair wrapped around it, doesn't it, Phantasma? It shuffles back on its guard, then prepares to attack again. Uh, that's one. Suzu knows all about this dog. It bares its teeth and growls. Oh crap, now what? Continue not moving. Threaten it loudly. Don't move. I suddenly yell, threatening it back. Provoked, the dog flies me. No, that was a bad idea. Oh, we're going to lose some time. Oh, I, I think I'm supposed to ignore it. I remember I was talking about that before. The dog holds the collar in its mouth and stares at me. That collar has an inscription on it, doesn't it? I'm sure it said, it's like Remto? Something like that? Renta, okay. What should I call? I have no idea how to pronounce that. Lenta. That's a complete guess. 
Complete, I have no idea what that upside down, what that R, lowercase r is supposed to look like. I mutter the name. The dog perks its ears. That might be good. I say it again, this time more clearly. Then... Oh no, that was bad, that was wrong. Wrong, wrong, wrong. <laughs> That's a dead John. I'll just add the six right now. There we go. The dog fixes its gaze on me. Its glare strangely piercing. Oh my god, the humanity. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> Frost, you're not supposed to bark. Okay, decide again. Try it again. I know for the first two for sure. Show the collar. I love how fast you can skim through these. Okay, stand still. Basically, just pretend we're not even here. I do not know what to do about the other one. Oh, and Phantasma, you said you didn't know right away. It developed years later. You went to your doctor and had them check your skin. They saw that something and referred to your dermatologist, and they cut it out, tested them, found cancerous parts, cut out some more, and now you have to go in once a year. Yes, definitely get your skin checked. I just avoid the sun altogether. <laughs> or if I do go out swimming or something, tons of sunscreen. And this one's fun because the first letter is in... Is that Cyrillic? What's Cyrillic, uh, Jimmy? Okay, the next one... Turn my back to it. <laughs> Pet it. I'm sure that's not the right answer. I break my gaze and turn my back to it. I pretend to not hear it threatening me. It growls for a while until it abruptly stops. The dog holds the collar in its mouth and stares at me. The collar has an inscription on it, doesn't it? I'm sure it said... So the alphabet they use in Russia and other places. Oh, okay, Jimmy. I have no idea what letter that might sound like, though. No, it just looks like an R. What should I call it? Genta? Okay. Look at all that soul power we have left. <laughs> Pet it. There you go. That won't hurt you. Genta. I mutter the name. The dog perks its ears. I say it again, this time more clearly. <laughs> I love that. It's the same thing if you get it right or wrong. Then, nothing. The dog turns around and quietly slinks into the brush. It disappears from sight. I, it seems I somehow managed to escape death. Thanks to <laughs> lots of help and trial and error. Yeah, I actually had a sus mole on my arm. I don't know if you guys can see scar right there. It's kind of discolored. They had to cut out a big chunk of skin to remove a mole. He didn't like how it looked. Turned out to be nothing, but better safe than sorry. That was a long time ago. Don't have any more moles like that, thank goodness. I pick up the collar that was left behind and sigh deeply. Are, are you okay? Yeah, that was... I can't even say it was no big deal. My words simply trail off. Oh, you had eight removed, but only one was cancerous. Well, that's good, though. I mean, sometimes they're not cancerous now, but it can still change over time, right? And yours was in the worst spot, Frost, but it looked ugly anyway, so you're glad it's gone. Sucks cleaning it daily, though. Oh, is it just like a hole or something you have to clean, Frost? Mine, it's just a big scar. I don't have to do any special treatment of it or anything. That's all I can answer with. I pat myself down with my hands, but I don't seem to be injured anywhere. I did feel teeth biting into my hand when the collar was snatched from me, though. That dog may be supernatural. I hope it doesn't attack again. Oh, I didn't know it actually bit us. Oh, in your belly button? <laughs> oh, that sucks. She, she felt it one day, got it checked, and they had to cut a whole section of her stomach out. And it was only one inch from her intestines. That's really scary. Oh, cancer's no joke. 
I got to go to the doctor. I haven't gotten checked out for anything in a long time. I just don't have any problems. So I don't like going to the doctor, but I should just for a regular checkup. Okay. I think we'll be fine. It found out, or it found what it was looking for. You're right. Okay, is there anything else here besides crazy monster dog? I think we're good. <gasps> I should save. Crap. A sound like a rope creaks above my head. This is creepy. Silhouettes swing in the shadow of the trees. My whole body shudders with dread. Are, th are those people? Suzu gives a terrified yelp. Speechless, I shine my flashlight on them. With a bunch of nails in their eyes, they clearly aren't people. They're mannequins. Oh, that's good to hear that they took care of it. The things hanging by their necks from the trees are display mannequins you can find in any department store. Obviously, dolls can't commit suicide. Is this someone's idea of a prank? Or maybe a warning to intruders? There's this old Xbox 360 game I like called... Um, uh, let's see, Condemned, Criminal Origins. It has the creepiest mannequin level ever when you're in a mall. It's so scary. The only one who knows the truth would be whoever did this. Let's go. I don't think they're dangerous. They're only man mannequins. Okay. <laughs> yeah, sure. Suzu replies uneasily. Martha is dead was messed up. Yeah, I wouldn't say it was like scary. There's some kind of creepy parts, but it was very, very disturbing. <laughs> that that game went into some stuff I've never seen before in a video game. And I even, like, censored the stream a little bit. Because there was a dog scene that you knew was coming up. And I just, I didn't, I didn't feel the need to show it. You guys knew what was happening. You didn't need to see it. I just totally kept it on the scene right here while I played through that little section until it was over. <laughs> That was so bad. It was so bad. Yeah, you should check it out, Buckbeak. It was a really cool scene. It's been so long since I've played it. I'm curious how well it holds up. I think it would still hold up as very creepy. Okay. Can I save it soon? But before either of us take a step forward, I feel a shaky hand gripping onto me. Is it Suzu? <laughs> I think it's Suzu holding onto us. Okay, let's save it. There we go. Oh, that feels better. Oops, wrong button. A doll is mercilessly hanging by its neck. It has something in its left hand. Grab that thing. Grabbing onto it to stop it from swaying, I open the hand and take what's inside. I found a worn out talisman. We need that stuff. Thank goodness. Yep. That was a gruesome scene as well, Frost. I don't know exactly what all they cut from the PlayStation version, but I could have seen... I can see that being part of it, for sure. When I pick up the worn talisman, we feel warmth throw flu or flow through me. Nice, got some more soul power. Okay, what else is here? You look at this one, too. The dolls swing unceasingly from their ropes, even though there is no breeze. That's weird. A male doll is hanging from a tree. I wonder what the person who did this was thinking. All right, forward we go. Him again? It's it's that dog. Suzu, be careful. No, it's okay now. It won't attack anymore. It's that dog from before. It starts digging in the dirt right in front of us. After a few moments, it disappears like mist. What was it doing? Is there something over there? Let's take a look. This is where it was digging. <laughs> That's a good idea. Sorry, John, I'm going to take a break from the stream and read a Bible for a little bit. 
Yeah, yeah, there was definitely some nightmarish stuff in that game, Frost. Especially the frame rate. It ran so bad on my computer with everything maxed out. I had to turn off the ray tracing and a few other things to get a stable frame rate. <laughs> okay, it's the place where the dog was dealing. Or digging. Let's feel around there. I reach out and touch the dirt, but the texture under my hand surprises me. Oh my goodness! Look who it is! Death Metal Dingo! Boom shakalaka! How is it going, Dingo? It's great to see you. 25 months sub to the channel. Thank you so much for that subscription, Dingo. How are you doing? How was your weekend? I bet you have been super busy with everything going on. What's up? What's new in the life of Dingo? Welcome. And thank you again so much for that sub. 25 months is crazy. Oh, bring them back. And I love the boom shakalaka. It makes me want to play some NBA jam. And Frost, you remember in college for a film class, the instructor picked out this movie with a gooey cannibal scene. You just averted your eyes and doodled the whole movie. I wonder what movie it was. A gooey cannibal scene. I remember watching... Uh, what was it called? Something about like... Something around the world was like the title of it. And... Uh, Oh, gory, not gooey. Did I say gooey? Yeah, you said gory. <laughs> and I think it had, um, like, natives, but I don't think that they were cannibals necessarily. The only cannibal movie I can remember, like an old one, is one called Cannibal Holocaust. Don't watch it. It's terrible. It has real-life animal violence in the movie. Just don't watch it. It's not a good movie. And Dingo, you started your new job today? You're exhausted, but you did get some cake out of it. Hell Yes, Dingo. Congratulations on the new job. That is so exciting. Um, and how do you like it so far? I mean, the first day, the first week, the first month is always very stressful. But uh, I hope you're enjoying it so far. Congrats again. Okay, so we reach out and touch the dirt, but the texture under our hands surprises us. The dirt around here is soft. Almost as if something was buried. Give me a hand. You're going to dig here? I don't think we'll need any tools. Please? Okay. Nice. 3,200 tokens and almost 1,200 tokens, Frost. You're doing really good, too. In silence, we kneel in this forest in the middle of the night and dig up the dirt with our hands. I feel like I'm robbing a grave. It could be that those words popped into my head because I somehow know we'd be found, or what we'd find. Distracted, oh, it's a corpse. I look down on what we dug up. And what we find is a corpse. It's just a skeleton now, but it doesn't look that old. Is, is that a corpse? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry for scarring you for life, little girl. My reply sounds incredibly flat and uncaring, even to me. At some point, death has become familiar. That fact, and not the corpse, is what sends a shiver down my spine. I'm too comfortable with the world of the dead. I know this, but I can't escape it. We've seen so much since we started this game. One part of me observes the remains before us and reacts calmly. Just then, I notice something. What's that? There's something white in the skeleton's hand. I dig out and discover it's a plastic bag. Inside are a number of cassette tapes and some kind of note. The note's deteriorated, but the parts are, of it are legible. I killed them all. One's assault to you. Now you rest in peace. Uh, yeah, see, this sounds like the husband kidnapped all the people that um, tortured his wife and murdered them and, like, hammered nails into their eyeballs. And elegant. Your memory is too good, so any visual of anything unpleasant is burned into you forever. Only audio you forget after a few hours. Oh, that would suck, Frost, in a situation like that. And Dingo, uh, it was so much work. Uh, on your first day, even, with one batch, you made nine 10 inch cakes, eight 8 inch cakes, 52 mini cakes, and 82 cupcakes. 
This sounds like an awesome job. <laughs> You're going to get so many freebies. That sounds great. And it was red velvet, so it looked like you were in a horror movie. Oh, yeah, your hands must have been so stained. <laughs> cool, though. Cake is delicious. How nice, Dingo. I, what needed to be done, I now die here. Oh, this is the husband's uh, spot where he died. This forest, you passed away. New song, want, listen, heaven. The note ends there. Three cassette tapes. We don't have a cassette play. Wait, no. I think I think we have like a music player in the car, but wasn't that just a CD player? I don't know if it plays cassettes. So that sounds like a suicide note, doesn't it? But these tapes. She looks at the cassette tapes. Why were they buried too? They look at the remains as if asking them the question. Of course, it's... I'm, it's not going to reply, <laughs> the skeleton. I don't know. I trail off. A different voice is whispering in my mind. The last. The voice falls silent. The last? Wait a second. The last what? The last tape that we just got? Huh. Is something the matter? I didn't say anything. It's nothing. Sorry, just talking to myself. Anyway, let's take these tapes with us. So, I'm curious. Now that we have tapes, I wonder if I can grab the unwound audio tape that was stuck to... Oh, God. That was st stuck to that tree. The Mark Burns Scarlet. Half an hour left until death comes in. Closes in. Crap. Uh, out of nowhere, my mark flares up painfully, the intense pulsing setting my nerves on fire. Shit. Are we out of time? I bite my lip and look at Suzu. Suzu? Suzu, hey, can you hear me? Anytime you hit the 30 minute mark, memory's gone. Yeah. It's finally here. It all starts now. I grab Suzu and run. Are we going to fight the spirit right now? And Frost, I don't know if I've ever even seen one of those dry industrial mixers. <laughs> Sounds like it could be like a working hazard if you're not careful and it grabs onto you. Good luck. The spirit is closing in on us. Oh, it's like the size of you, Dingo. Dang. Oh, Phantasma, I need spring break. I need some kind of break. I I'm ready for like a week off work at least. Did I get in the car to go somewhere? Regardless, I'm here inside it, gripping the wheel. The mansion. I need to go back there for now. I glance through the rearview mirror at Suzu in the back seat. Suzu was staring vacantly out the window with a slightly tilted head. The only thing out there is darkness. There's nothing to look at. An ending warning? You must go to the mountains. Now, is that a hint so we don't get a bad ending, Jimmy? Is that what you mean by ending warning? Ida's tape player is laying on the side of the passenger seat. I grabbed it from the back, meaning to play one of those tapes. We quickly arrived at Cujo Mansion. Even if I discuss it with Mary, it's probably best to listen to a tape first. Only one? I reach for one, but as I do, I notice something odd. Oh no. Where are we? I'm on an unfamiliar road, like I took a wrong turn somewhere. No, it's not unfamiliar. I've clearly been down this road before. But the route I was taking should have had no way for me to come across this road. That's the only way I can describe it. It's impossible. Whoa. It's one way to stop. C calm down. I must have made a mistake because I was messing around with the tape player. I wouldn't get lost, lost on the way to the mansion. I've been to it many times now. I just missed the first intersection and ended up somewhere strange. That's all. That's what I tell myself as I make a U-turn. But no matter how many times I go back, 
Damn it. Why am I here again? That's terrifying. Being stuck in some endless loop on the road. No matter how I turn, I end up on the same road. Right, left, or keep going straight, I still return to the exact same place. This is ridiculous. I hit the steering wheel. Maybe it was because of my outburst, but my mark suddenly starts or my mark starts burning with pain again. This is bad, really bad. Ugh. Excuse me. At this rate, death will catch us or catch up to us while we're here in the car. Having said that, we can't go back to the mansion. I don't think we'll be able to get out of this maze no matter how many times I try. In that case, what should I do? Where should I drive? See, I would never say the mountain to me. Not that I want to pick one of the wrong ones, but... I don't know, for me, the mountain is the most unfamiliar. I'd probably pick one of the other two because it just seems more familiar, I guess. Or if I wanted to get back to the mansion, taking a different highway would kind of make sense. But yeah, we'll do this one. T Mountain. I turned the steering wheel in the direction of the place that popped into my head. T Mountain. Not that I have to go there. The destination isn't important so as long as it gets me out of the situation. I hit the gas pedal and abruptly turned the wheel, trying to get out of this cursed trap. Finally, familiar scenery returns, as if it was laying in wait for me. In the end, we're back here. The phone is ringing. I know exactly who's calling. Oh crap, it's time. The mark is dyed a deep crimson. A few minutes left until death closes in. I didn't realize there was a phone booth in the mountains. I head to the phone booth. I have got Ida's radio cassette and the bag holding Seiko's uh, memories at the ready. Picked up the receiver, but the phone immediately goes dead. Oh crap. Oh, creepy. Oh, that's very creepy. I can't even see half of it and it's very creepy. Live or die. Oh no. Okay, glad we saved it. Hopefully we don't get seven or eight or ten deaths right now. You saw it, didn't you? I know you saw it. We say hell no, we didn't see it. Oh, um, take a picture with the camera. She'll love that. That might weaken her. I quickly grab the instant camera and use the flash. She did not like that. The spirit shrieks, and while it's distracted, I tumble out of the booth. <laughs> Bunker with tapes. <laughs> Least effective, I thought. Once out, I spot out of the corner of my eye. Oh, now she's coming. The spirit's standing there, looking down at me, because she's like 10 feet tall. The camera's battery is dead. What should I do next? Good question. Play the music? The music had to do with her, too. Oh my gosh. Uh, charm Song. I have no idea. I stick Charm Song into the tape player and press the play button. Listen. Often, dear. Spirit responds to the song. Spirit quietly drifts closer. What should I do next? I don't think that worked. Yeah, <laughs> bark at her. That works great. Um, echo ballad.
I don't think we want my because it sounds like I, and she doesn't like that. I stick Echo Ballad into the tape player and press the play button. I love. Spirit responds to the song. The spirit quietly drifts closer. What should I do next? Oh no. There's only one more song, right? Maybe I should have played them in a certain order. I stick my into the tape player and press the play button. I don't know what this one. The spirit responds to the song. That ain't doing crap to her. Oh God, look at that head. That's horrifying. And the eyes are kind of goofy looking, <laughs> but still creepy. The spirit is right in front of me. Hey, let me listen to the newest. I guess we're going to play Mai again. That's the only one that seemed to have a little bit more reaction. I stick Mai into the tape player and press the play button. Yes. That song was finished. Did I do it correctly? A dog comes bounding over from somewhere, barking happily. Jen, is this where you've been? Come on, let's go. He's waiting. The hell did she just explode on us? <laughs> There's a flash of light. I blink and the spirit is gone. Wow, I can't believe we survived that. I'm almost like, assume I'm going to die every boss battle. But we didn't take care of the ghost, did we? We didn't like, exercise it. I feel like we still need to expel this ghost to help with the mark. I don't sense Hanayai, uh, Hanayomi anymore. She's gone now, Hanayomi. Suzu is back to normal. I bet their mark's gone. Wait, so we did finish it? Maybe we did complete that ghost. But mine's still bright on my arm. I guess Hanayomi didn't give me my mark after all. Then Hanayomi re really was Psycho Hagasawa. What a sad, terrible fate. Turning into a ghost after she died. I feel sorry for her. This place isn't too far from where Seiko died. Maybe that's why. The instant Hanayome vanished, I thought I caught a glimpse of her loyal dog. Oh, and Dingo. So this game, it's a visual novel horror type game. And have you ever seen like The Ring or The Grudge? It's a very similar concept to that, where we've been cursed by the spirit with this mark on our arm, and we only have a short time to live. And we basically have to go out and try to find other spirits that are haunting, and see if we can essentially expel them or exercise them out of this world to see if they were the one that cursed us, we can get rid of our curse. We keep finding these ghosts, and when we help them, it helps other people around us, but it hasn't helped us yet. I hope her dog and the song her fiancé wrote her help her to be at peace in heaven. I... or should we head back? Yeah. Oh, phone's ringing again. Huh? The phone starts ringing out of nowhere. I thought that boss battle might have been a little too easy. It won't stop. It's like it's waiting for someone to answer. What should I do? Pick it up. Hello? Curiosity killed the John. Um... On the other end of the line is a gentle voice of a woman. I'm so very sorry for causing you so much trouble. Please excuse me. Was that a wrong number or something? I was a little panicked, but now I can relax. I step out of the booth and get into the car with Suzu. 
It was a creepy movie, wasn't it, Dingo? Yeah, so you have a kind of an idea of how the story sort of works. A lot of detective work, trying to figure out how to get rid of the curse before it does kill you. Welcome back, Mr. Cadia. And thanks to you that my mark on, the, on my arm is finally gone. Too bad I didn't get to do much. I've read a ton of comics about exorcism, so I thought I could help. That's all you need. Comics. <laughs> Good job to you, Suzu. Everything went okay? Uh, yeah, it's all thanks to him. Oh, yeah. I bet I could have done a better job than him. I waited for you to return, Larkinia. It appears that you overcame your fear and cleared away the grudge. Speaking of the grudge, congratulations. It's an apt title for the movie, huh? Though it isn't unfortunate that your mark has not yet vanished. I, ma I managed to defeat three spirits now, but my mark still hasn't disappeared. It feels like that terrible fact might just freeze the blood in my veins. All I can do now is press forward. Mr. Cadia, may I have a word? How about no? <laughs> can you find a brick to bop her? <laughs> we have a fireplace. We could just toss her in there. Um, I looked through the off other files in the garage after you left, and I found this. A little... Oh, she hands you over a file that says H Shrine Findings on the cover. See, Haya Kujo's signature is in the corner. The Kujo family's guardians were housed there, so it makes sense that uh, this was here. Go on, read it. What does it say? What does it say? Most of it is about how the H Shrine was built and its history. It lines up with what Mary told us. Everything that happened from the anti Buddhist movement to now is in there. fireplace would be way more devastating to a dummy than a brick. <laughs> but it looks like even Saya didn't know who stole the statues 50 years ago. Some pages about H Shrine Go Shintai, the item that houses the deity spirit. The shrine has two, a mirror and a small Buddha statue called, oh my gosh, Ninji Butsu? The Ninji Butsu should be in a bro brocade pouch but I never saw anything like that at the shrine. I wonder where it ended up. Very good question. The last few pages contain notes on an investigation into the stolen statues. It mentions a rumor that started circulating a few months ago. Oh gosh. K. Miyamache North Road in H City. <laughs> I'm getting pretty tired. I've been tired all stream. Just kind of recovering from time change, I think. I don't know. I've been kind of extra tired the last few nights. Probably because it feels like I'm waking up at 4.30 and probably not getting enough sleep because it's harder to go to sleep early. It's a back street that, due to the city's poor planning, is covered in manholes. That'd be weird. Great for the Ninja Turtles. Because of that, people call it Manhole Road. On a moonless night, a young woman is walking down it on her way home from work. Um, was that something that was like universal or just for the state frost? Because I, I thought we voted against it for California. I wasn't sure when that was going to pass. But then I thought I saw something that seemed more like universal throughout America. And that would be great. I would love to get rid of daylight. Actually, no. I don't want to get rid of daylight savings time. I want to get rid of regular time. Make daylight savings time the normal. You get long summers and uh, late summer days, and then get rid of uh, the other one altogether. Oh yes, the Senate was doing it. I'm all for that. Please, and thank you. An old sign reads, Be wary of strangers. Suddenly fearful, she attempted to hurry her steps down that dimly lit back street. But she couldn't take a step forward. Ah, oh, that would be great. Let's not go back in the fall. Oh, you're heading out, Phantasma. Have a good night. We'll be wrapping up here just as soon as I can save it. But thank you for hanging out. Hope you have a great night. A noise. Something heavy being dragged. And then a figure was discernible from out of the darkness. It was a woman with disheveled hair, wearing a burnt white robe. 
She cradled a head, headless Buddha statue as if it was her own child. Hey, maybe we'll find out where they were taken. The shadows that hair hid most of the face, but she could see her blood red lips twisted in a satisfied smile. Terrified by the eerie sight, she turned on her heel and ran away. Some distance away, she turned to look back. But the woman was gone. Hmm. The statues were stolen 50 years ago, but so it wasn't that woman, but I doubt that it's easy to find a headless Buddha statue. I'm sure she must know something. I asked Hana Yome where the statues stolen from H Shrine were. And now there's an unexpected lead. What a strange coincidence. If you can find those stolen statues and honor them at H Shrine, the divine wrath will be quelled and you might be freed from the mark. Another way that might be possible allow me to escape my mark. It's worth looking into at least. Oh, before I forget, you should take these too. Documents on the Hagisawa case uh, that we found after you left. Read through them if you want. And it sucks for people in the Northeast states where it is dark until 8 or 9 in the winter. Oh my gosh. But you think it'll be worth it? I think it'll be worth it overall too. Yeah, the winter might suck a little bit more, but overall without screwing up people's sleep schedules and everything, that'll be a, a net win. It is almost done. We must end today's investigation. Please rest. Yes, thank you. Save point. Thank you very much, mister. Because of you, I think I'll get to go see my dad, too. You need to go somewhere to see him? My mom and dad got divorced. Oh. Yeah, mom decided that she wanted to become a nun. She started taking me to temples and a lot of sacred areas. Dad didn't like that, so he started seeing some other lady. <laughs> yeah, mm. I understand. You don't have to say more. I guess Susu's been embroiled in the word of a world of adults for a while lately. Maybe that's why she's so brave while being so young. That would make sense. And let's see. But time is an illusion. Something we created, <laughs> essentially. I asked mom to tell me where dad is, but she wouldn't say. She told me he's bewitched by a demon and to forget him. So that's why I wanted to ask uh, Hanayomi where dad is. I see. I hope you get to see him. I hope it wasn't that guard we saw at the beginning of the game that's dead. Me too. Okay, good night. Please be done. No! I'm, I'm really in your debt. It's thanks to you that Suzu was saved. Thanks so much. He seems more worried about her than himself. I think we'll run into... Maybe not all three of them, but at least one of them. And I think the highest probability is probably Mashita, Michael. But I could not say for sure. <laughs> His appearance, personality, and job all make him suspicious. But that one thing is clear. I know she asked me to, but I was the one who brought her here after all. So if something bad happened to her, I just... <laughs> oh, poor guy. Hey, are you alright? I'm so glad she's okay. And the hot tears streaming down his face are those of relief, apparently. Jeez, look at all the crying he's doing right now. You should head to bed for today. I'm sure you're tired, right? Yeah, thanks. Good night. <laughs> Where? I'm heading to bed soon myself. My mark's finally gone. I think I'm going to sleep well tonight. There's no reason for you to stay any longer. You're right about that. I'll be leaving tomorrow. Sorry, but even nine lives wouldn't be enough to survive staying here. True. True. I've already used six. You said it. But I'm grateful for all this, too. It gave me time to rethink my life. Ironic, isn't it? If I hadn't been cursed by a spirit, I'd now be in that forest right now. Christy's smile turns wry. Well, I'm off to bed now. Good night. Now then, 
Lord Cadia, please find me when you are ready. Farewell. I mean, I can save. Yeah, please save. Come on. Yes. All right. Good, good, good. Perfect timing. Well, no. A little bit later than I wanted to go. But we were in the middle of boss battles. It was kind of hard to stop. All right. It is time to wrap this up. Oh, I think I hit the wrong button. It's nearly dawn. I better get some rest. Oh, yeah. That tries to leave, but it doesn't work. How do you leave again? Quit the game? Is under bag? And there we go. That's what you got to do. There. We did it. We did it. Are they adding new ghosts as I find them to the background, or have those always been there? Either way, it's a really cool looking background. A fun game.